city and in the territory on West. There's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, the story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, starring William Conrad. thing about Dodge being quiet like this, there's time for fishing. Ah, beer, steak, and catfish stew makes for a good supper. You two are going to be sick, stuffing yourselves that way. Well, now, Kitty, Chester spent all day catching these fish. He's got a right to eat what he wants. I've heard of people who go to bed with an aspidity bag around their necks when they eat too heavy. I'd rather be sick. <laughs> oh, it's not so bad. Once you're used to it, it kind of lulls you to sleep. More coffee, Miss Kitty? Uh, no, thanks, Chester. Late. I better get back to my place. You're a good cook, Chester. Oh, say, thank you. Have you ever got tired of the law business, Chester? Maybe you could get a job at Delmonico. The regular customers might get a little tired of catfish stew, Matt. <laughs> Come on, Kitty. I'll walk you back. All right. Uh, will I see you in the morning, Mr. Dillon? I'll be at the office early, and I want to ride out to Jim Redigo's place and look at a horse. Can I go with you? Uh, sure. Maybe you'll see something you'd like to have. Uh, we'll leave early before it gets too hot. Good night. Good night, Mr. Dillon. Miss Kitty. Good night. Redigo's place is going to look kind of nice. All them trees growing up around the house that way. Hey, he's done pretty good in a year's time. Of course, it's a long way out of Dodge. You need space to raise good horses, Chester. Yes, sir, I know, but it must get mighty lonesome out here. I don't think that bothers Jim much. Looks from here like his corrals and cat's pens are empty, Mr. Dillon. Well, maybe he's moved his horses out to get the last of the summer grass. Mm. You got any special horse in mind? Well, the last time he was in Dodge, Jim was bragging up a sorrel stud he's got. It might take $30 for him. Well, good horses come high, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Now, let's pull up here. The horses will stand. Quiet like, isn't it? Jim? Jim, ready to go. Maybe he's not here. Well, he can't have gone far. He didn't even push the door shut. I guess he won't mind if we go in and boil up a pot of coffee. There's a pot already on the stove. It looks like he was just about to fry up some side meat. Mm. Pot's full. Now, Jim must have spent the night away from here. The stove's cold, Chester. Well, maybe he had early this morning. Now, this stove hasn't been lit for longer than that. A man doesn't leave side meat lying uncooked in a skillet. Mm. You sure don't figure, Mr. Dillon. Oh. I ain't armed, mister. Don't, don't shoot. What? Don't shoot me. Nobody's going to shoot you, old man. Well, come on in. I I seen you right up. I was hiding out back. Well, who are you? I'm Jed Cuff. What are you doing here? I work for young Jim Redigo, but not anymore. What are you talking about? They come riding up and... They killed Jim. Two nights ago it was. I was hiding. But I I got hungry and I come in to get something to eat. Redigo's dead? Laying dead against the water trough out back. They shot him. Can I eat something? Who shot him? The men who come to take the horses. They killed Jim and then they run his horses off. 
Jim tried to fight him, but it was two of them against the one of him. Well, I thought you were here. I run away. I was scared. Cold coffee is better on the empty stomach. He's plumb on his head, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Uh, old man. Jed Cuff, that's me. Well, show us where Jim is, huh? Uh, I ain't a brave man, mister. I I run away from all them guns. That's okay, Jim. You'll just take us to Jim. Out back. That's where he's laying. I'll show you. But before he died, mister, Jim killed one of them horse thieves dead. He's laying out here, too. You think this old man's telling the truth, Mr. Dillon? Well, as straight as he can remember it, Chester. It's just that he's old and not very bright anyway. There he is. There's Jim. And there's the other fellow laying right where Jim shot him out of his saddle. Uh, Jim was a fine boy. But I was scared, and I ran out the back way and hid where they couldn't see me. Jed. Did you know these two men? Had you ever seen them before? No, mister. I never. No. Uh, Chester, see if you can find a shovel. It took less than an hour to bury Jim Redigo and the other men. When we were through, Jed put a sort of marker on each grave and we went into the house. Chester and I found some food in the cupboard, and we fed the old man. Then we started him for Dodge. Happy enough, astride an old donkey, we found grazing free behind the house. Then Chester and I watered our horses, and a few minutes later, rode away from the Redigo place, following the two-day-old sign of the stolen horses. About sundown, we saw a long column of riders moving towards the north. What do you think it is, Mr. Dillon? Well, it could be cavalry out of Fort Larned. Or maybe Indians? Or Indians. If it is Indians, we ought to get out of here. Now, they're riding too slow to be a war party, Chester. Now, it's Indians, all right. Cavalry wouldn't circle that way. Then we're going to go right up to them? Well, if we can... Hey, look, they've stopped. Yeah. How many of you figure there are? Oh, uh, maybe 60, 70. Might be a whole Indian village on the move. If it is, they're not looking for trouble. I hope not. Now, they're waiting for us, all right. Now, when we get up to them, keep both your hands on the saddle horn. Yes, sir. All right. Heads up. Yes, sir. Just sitting there, looking at it. They'll talk when they're ready. I am Quick Knife. My name is Matt Dillon. Uh, my braves and I have watched you come. You are looking for the white man. That's right. The white man sold us horses. Our squaws ride them now. He stole those horses from another white man. We bought the horses with gold. He killed a man when he stole. You have come to take back the horses and punish the man. Yeah. Uh, the horses you cannot take. The man you must find for yourself. The horses are ours now. There are two of you. And many of us. All right, quick now. Uh, what about the man? He left the horses with us and rode west. His name is Tebow. How long ago? Not long. He knows someone is following him, and he is afraid. His trail will not be hard to follow. Thank you, quick knife. Just a I 
wonder if they're going to try Don't look anything. back. Well... Now, what were you going to say? Nothing. Only they're still just sitting back there on their horses, Mr. Dillon, watching us. Yeah. I was just a mite scared, was you? Yeah, I think maybe I was. Well... <laughs> Are we going to track Tebow now, Mr. Dillon? Yeah. We'll track him, Chester. And we'll find him. Soon after we left the Indians, night came, and we couldn't track Tebow any farther. The next day, we rode hard, following his trail towards the west. The prairie stretched out gray and green before us. And several times out on the horizon, we saw puffs of dust rising. We knew Tebow was somewhere ahead of us. He must have been riding a good animal, because when dust came, we hadn't closed in on him. It was dark when we spotted a nester's cabin and pulled up. You think maybe he's hiding out in there, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, he could be. Just keep your eyes open. Well, but who knows? We can't track him at night. Don't you think maybe he'd just keep it going? Well, any man's got to sleep and eat sometime, Chester. Yeah, yeah, sir, that's true. I thought maybe we could get some food and water our horses. Who are you? My name's Dillon. We don't have many strangers out here. I'm a U.S. Marshal. Well, I've got some tater soup work. Well, thank you. Uh, this is Chester Proudfoot. How do, ma'am? You just sit at the table there. Thank you, ma'am. Ah, you're a long ways out here. We was headed for Colorado Territory. We never made it. You're a widow woman? No. It's just the boy that died. Maybe that's why my man and I stopped here. He built this place. Here you are. Ah, thank you. Say, this is real stout soup. Where is your husband? Hunting. Uh-huh. Well, night hunting's a pretty poor thing, isn't it? Yeah. Sometimes the body don't have much choice. When will your husband be back? You're asking a lot of questions, mister. Well, I told you I'm a U.S. Marshal. People have good luck and bad. Ours has been mostly bad. Yeah. I'm looking for a man called Tebow. I don't know him. Well, if yours is the only place we've seen, he came this way. My man's name is Kirch, Abe Kirch. We don't know anybody called Tebow. Ah. Well, uh, thank you, Miss Kirch. We'll water our horses and get moving. Get moving? Thank you, ma'am. It was mighty tasty soup. You're riding on now, ain't you? Yes, that's right. You can water your horses right out there in front. Good night. Good night. Well, one thing, she wasn't too talky of a woman, at least. Not living out here so long, maybe she's lost her habit. Yeah, maybe. This cussed buckskin can drink more water than a Texas mule. Oh, they've had enough. Yeah. All right, let's ride. Oh. Oh. Mr. Dillon? What? 
I can't see no doggone tracks in all this dark. Never mind. Yes, sir, but how are we going to see Just where... Just ride and be quiet, Chester. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. All right, hold up. Oh. Now, let's get these horses hobbled. Oh, I think they'll stand, Mr. Dillon. And I want to make sure they do. Yes, sir. And then we'll walk back to the Nestor's cabin. Walk back? Well, what in the world for? That woman said her husband was out hunting. But there was a sharps 50 leaning in the corner. A man doesn't go hunting and leave his gun home. All right, come on. It could be Mr. Kirch took another gun with him. He's too poor to have another gun. Well, where do you think he is? I don't know, but there's something wrong back there, Chester. His wife was mighty anxious to be rid of us. Usually it's hard for a traveler to break away. The people are so hungry for news and a little talk. I guess that's right. Yeah. Now watch where you put your feet. Yes, sir. It only took a few minutes to make our way back to the Nestor's cabin, where a pale light showed through the chinking and under the door. Some 30 feet short of the cabin, we stopped. We could hear voices inside. I motioned to Chester, and we stretched out flat against the ground and then inched our way closer. Now we could make out it was a man and woman talking. One voice was Miss Kirch, and the other was either her husband or Tebow. Who said that? He ain't hurt bad. There's blood on his face. I hit him to keep him from talking out. You come around. I got rid of those two men like you told me. Is that him? Said you wouldn't man? hurt Abe if that I did that. Wait a minute, Chester. I just hit him on the head now. Shut up. We ain't never harmed nobody. I did what you said and not... I... I told you to shut up. You open your mouth again and I'll fix your husband good. <laughs> Get your food out on that table. Gotta have me something to take along. <laughs> Chester, he's busy now packing up that food. Crawl around to the back of the cabin and then make some noise. What sort of a noise? It doesn't matter. Just so he knows somebody's out back. Then what? I don't know yet. Now get going. That's fine. You take all that? What we gonna eat? Go hungry. Those men here were the law, weren't they? One man said he was a marshal. They've been following you. You must have done something bad, real bad. I killed a man who talked too much, woman. And I just... Uh, uh, Someone's out back. Please, don't shoot me. I'm going out. Don't you make a sound or I'll come back for you. All right, Tebow, drop it. What? I can see you, Tebow. Drop your gun or I'll kill you. Well, now, uh, hold on, mister. Let's, uh, let's talk a minute, huh? You can't shoot at my voice. Now, drop it. No, I won't. Sure. Kind of too bad you had to kill him. But then they'd have hung him for a horse thief anyway. Yeah. And he killed Jim Redigo, too, Mr. Dillon. Well, get it, Chester. Yes, sir. Now, we better get into the cabin. There's nothing we can do out here. We did what we could to make Kirch rest comfortable and then sat up half the night talking to his wife about uh, Dodge, the railroad, stores, all the news a woman would be hungry for. And the next morning early, Chester and I started on the ride back to Dodge. It was clear and bright, and we made good time, Chester riding along, feeling mighty proud. The Nestor had said he couldn't feed another horse, and so... 
Chester was trailing his own buckskin and riding the big red stud that Tebow had been using. Yeah, Chester was mighty pleased with life. And Tebow, who'd stolen the stud a few days earlier from Jim Redigo, was buried out on the prairie with stones piled on his grave to keep off the coyotes. <laughs> Stranger in Dodge, Marshal. Well, I've only been gone a week, Sam. Hey, you got any rye left? Kitty over there has got the last bottle, Marshal. Oh? Uh -huh. I'll have some tomorrow when Santa Fe gets in. Good. Meanwhile, I'll see if I can talk Kitty out of a drink. Sure. I heard you were back, Matt. How are you? Hey, you've been saving that bottle for me, Kitty? You know, I never drink rye. <laughs> Thanks. as I've been to civilization in the week. Did you find what you're after? Yeah, I found him. Yeah. Uh, what's that stuff you're drinking? This? Here. Keep the bottle on the floor. It looks better. Well, let me see that. Professor Bones Wonder Medicine. Celebrated vegetable pulmonic detergent. Well, I hope it tastes better than it reads, Kitty. <laughs> tastes fine, Matt. Makes you feel fine, too. Essential oil of worm seed, a new and valuable curative. Professor Bone, Ph.D., and Pulmist. Professor of Practical and Medical Botany, Natural and Civil History. <laughs> well, that makes sense. Why the world did you get a hold of this? Well, everybody's taking it, Matt. Oh, I forgot you were away when Professor Bone arrived. What? Huh? You mean he's here in Dodge? Sure. Came last Thursday. Got a fancy wagon they lectures from every day. But this time, as a matter of fact, you should hear him, Matt. He's great. Yeah, yeah. He must be. No, he really is. Well, what's in that tonic, Kitty? You're kind of misty already. Makes you feel great, Matt. Try some. Here. Uh, no, 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 no. I don't need any worm seed oil. Liquor does me all the harm I need. You'll buy some once you've heard him talk. He's awful smart, Matt. Yeah, yeah, he must be. He's a professor. It says so on the bottle there. I don't care if he's a professor or not. He makes wonderful tonic. Yeah, I can see he does. Well, uh, Matt? Oh, I'm glad you're back. Yes, you come with me. Oh, uh, hello, Doc. Sit down, won't No, you? you come with me outside. I want you to see the spectacle. What? Huh? Oh, well, what are you talking about? By this red-nosed old scarecrow, Loot Bone. You ought to be tarred and feathered, that's what. Oh, look, look right there. There's a bottle of... Kitty, that's yours. It's good, Doc, real good. I'm going to smash this bottle in the street. No. And if I find you drinking any more of it, I'll paddle you. That's what I'll do. Really, Doc? Oh, oh, you see, you see what it does to people? Come on, Matt. Okay, Doc, I might as well find out what this is all about. You'll excuse us, Kitty? You, not Doc. I mean what I said, Kitty. Boy. Yeah, let's go, Doc. Uh, there, there's his wagon. And look at that crowd of fools. Well, what's so wrong with it, Doc? I'll tell you later. First, I want you to hear him talk. The man's demented, that's what. Uh, there he is, Matt, yes. Is he standing in the back of his wagon there? Yes. He's finished entertaining them now. We're just in time for the serious part. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. I discovered the formula for this famous elixir 
while serving as personal surgeon to the king of Santo Del Rio. Oh, the liar. Is he and since that listen. time, Professor Bones Wonder Medicine has cured more than 3,000 cases of ague, 2,500 of chronic inflammatory rheumatism, 2,000 of green sickness, 1,000 of mercurial diseases, 1,500 of liver infection, and 6,000 of general debility. Matt, he ought to be hung. It purifies, cleanses, and strengthens the fountain springs of life and infuses new vigor throughout the entire body. In fact, my friends, Professor Bones' wonder medicine will cure all disorders incident to the human race, without exception, no matter what the age, circumstance, or place of residence of the afflicted patient. Hey, Professor, I live over in this stinking spring. Will it cure me? <laughs> You're drunk. What a day ever since I was weaned, Professor. I pity you, my friend. Professor, when I was 12, I got drunk and went to sleep at a hackerberry tree. I never did find out how I got down. <laughs> oh, don't laugh. Ladies and gentlemen, don't. Don't laugh. Pity the poor man, the poor wretch. Whiskey has him crushed in its foul trap. His eyes roomy, his brains awash, his manhood's gone. Are you shy up? Whiskey, I tell you. Whiskey did it. Any more talk about me, and I'll put a bullet in you, Professor. Evil man, drunken specter. I'm telling you, no more. No, no more. No. Ladies and gentlemen, about to appear on the wagon beside me is a man you all know and respect. One of your finest and most worthy citizens. A man whose very presence contributes mightily to the progress of your fair town. A man whose soul is pure, but whose body, ah, whose body has been the host of five separate diseases, any one of which would soon have been fatal. But now he is saved. Three bottles of Professor Bones' wonder medicine has done it, and and here he is to tell you of this miraculous cure in his own words. Step forward, sir, and speak. Speak for the sake of your fellow man. Great heavens, Matt! It's Chester. Chester. Hello, Mr. Dillon. Get on from there. Why, yes, sir. But my dear sir... You've got to talk to the people. Hurry it up, Chester. Well, who are you, sir? Where are you going now? No, well, come back here, you. Come back. Just go on with your lecture, Professor. Never mind about him. You should pick the wrong fine citizen, Professor. <laughs> hey, Professor. Yes, what? This here stuff of yours will cure anything? Anything, my friend. Every disorder known to the medical faculty. Well, my old man is 80. And he's got a beam stuck in his throat. <laughs> no, now shut up, all of you. It's for true. How about it, Professor Willis? I'll come to see your father, sir. I'll visit him as soon as I'm able to pass a few bottles down among the good people gathered here. Uh, thanks. Hello, Mr. Uh, Dillon. Doc? Come on, let's get out of here. Chest of all people. I suppose he's got you all doped up with that stuff, too, Chester? Oh, it makes you feel great, Doc. Is that why you were up there? No, sir. I got a deal with the professor. He pays me $2.50 a day and gives me all the medicine I can drink. Free. It's idiots like you that made it possible for such quackery, Chester? Now, here, Doc, I'm not an idiot. You've been acting like one, but that's not what's important. Now, I've analyzed some of Bone's so-called medicine. It's got opium in it, for one thing. Well, you think it's dangerous? Doc? Of course it is. People can get in the habit, and what's worth is something is wrong with them, and they're taking the stuff they wouldn't find out until it's too late. You've got to stop this business, Matt. Yeah, I suppose you're right, Doc. Either you stop him or... Or by heaven, I'll shoot him. Now, I'm serious, Matt. All right, Doc, all right. I'll talk to him a little later. And meantime, you stay away from him, Chester. 
Yes, sir. I'm sorry, Mr. Dillon. I didn't know. All right, hold it, Sam. Hold it. Uh, Professor Bone, I'd like to have a word with you. And who are you, sir? I'm a U.S. Marshal. Now, uh, let's sit at a table over there, huh? Come on. I'm at your service, Marshal. Watch you sit down. Thank you. And uh, to what do I owe this honor, sir? It uh, isn't exactly an honor, Professor. I want you to stop putting opium in that stuff you're selling. Oh, well, come now, Marshal. Surely you don't believe... Doc this, Adams this. has analyzed it, Professor, and either you make it harmless or I'm going to run you out of Dodge. <clears throat> yes, yes, I believe you would. Now, you're free to sell it and you're free to do all the talking you want, but that's all. I'm, I'm a lonely old man, Marshal, and I'm tired of wandering. I'll do what you say. Good. I uh, hope you don't get into trouble with your preaching about liquor, Professor. I have been fighting against drink ever since I was a youth. Oh? Well, what about opium? Isn't that just as bad? Well, I don't sell enough to do any harm, Marshal. Maybe, but why are you so strong about whiskey? When I was a child of 12, my grandfather got drunk and threw a pet owl onto a horse that was standing nearby. What? And he did and it frightened the horse into kicking an orphan boy. Broke the rim of his belly. That boy died, Marshal. Oh, oh I see. That's the bone. Ah, Mr. Reeves. Welcome, sir. And how is your good father? Marshal, I'm glad you're here. Oh, what's the trouble, Reeves? It's here now, Professor. He's a trouble. I'll tell you. My old man, he had a bean stuck in his throat. The professor told me to give him a steam bath and then throw cold water on him. And I was doing it. Well, what for? Well, so he'd catch cold and get a cough and bring up the bean. Oh, well, of all... But it didn't work, Mr. Reeves? It killed him. It what? My old man is dead. Dead? Good heavens, poor fellow. Now, I'm going to kill you, Professor. No, you're not. No, but no man can die of a mere cold, Mr. Reeves. Some, something must have gone wrong. Something went wrong, all right. Uh, come on. We'll get dark and go see what this is all about. And you'll get the idea of shooting anybody out of your head, Reeves. Maybe I will. Professor Bone wasn't a normal, everyday-type citizen, but he wasn't a murderer, either. And whatever had gone wrong and killed Reeves' father couldn't be blamed entirely on him. Reeves had been a fool to follow his advice in the first place. Doc told him so, too, in as many ways as he could think of. We found the old man still lying in the steam bath Reeves had made. All he'd done was to dig a big hole in the ground with a fire pit in the middle and then stretch some canvas across the top for a roof. Doc climbed down into it, and after a few minutes, he came back out again. Uh, well, Reeves, all I can figure is your father died of a heart attack. I don't believe it, Doc. 
That old man was strong as a bull. Well, I know that, but there's nothing else that could have caused it. How long did you have him in there, Reeves? Oh, maybe half hour, Marshal. He was having a fine time when I left him. He poured a whole jug of vinegar on them rocks. I went up to the house to get some more. Oh, wait a minute. What would you say? Uh, vinegar? Sure. Professor here said it'd help him to sweat. Wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I thought so. Well, it's the vinegar that killed him, Reeves. What do you mean? That's limestone you used in there, isn't it? Well, limestone is All strong. right. You put vinegar on hot limestone, and it'll make acid gas. Well, and that's what suffocated your pa. I'll be... A... I, I didn't tell you to use limestone, Mr. Reeves. No, you, you can't blame me for that. No, but the vinegar was your idea, Professor, and I still say you murdered him. Now, wait a minute, Reeves. You're not being sensible. This thing was an accident, that's all. Huh? I'm not a murderer. I never hurt anybody in my you life. You don't even know what you do, you old fake. Selling that slop of yours, loaded with narcotics. Did you tell him to stop that, Matt? Yeah, yeah, Doc. He said he would. My medicine is as pure as the dew, gentlemen. A newborn babe could drink don't it. Don't let me catch you giving handy newborn babes. I'm going to analyze it every day you're here. And I hope that won't be much longer. Oh, I'm a lonely old man, sir. The only home I have is in my wagon. Well, then go live in it somewhere else. Huh? You've caused enough trouble around here. Doc, take it easy on him. Am I to be banished from the face of the earth? Am I not a man like any other man? Do you think I have no heart, no feelings? No soul? Well, why don't you just shut up and get out of here? I want to bury my old man. I would gladly help you in that task, Mr. No, Reeves. sir. No, sir, not you. Not by a long sight. You are unkind, sir. Gentlemen, I take my leave of you. Good day. For some reason, the three of us stood there in silence and watched Professor Bone walk away. He stopped once and glanced back at us for a moment, then went on. Later, when we got back to Front Street, his wagon was gone, and we figured probably that would be the last that we'd see of him. Dodge was fairly quiet that night. And when somebody reported seeing a fire of some kind out on the prairie, I decided I might as well ride out and have a look. There's no flames left, Mr. Dillon. I guess it must be all burned out. I don't remember a house of any kind around here. I wonder what it was. Well, maybe just a prairie fire that didn't get really started. Yeah. Oh, there's something, Chester. Over there. Yeah. I can see a few coals. Oh. Oh. Why, it's a wagon, Mr. Dillon. It's all burned up. That's Professor Bone's wagon, Chester. I know I see you're right. That's his horse, too. Professor! Professor Bone? Now, let's take a look here. Where in the world could he be, Mr. Dillon? I don't know, Chester. Uh, uh, look out now. I'm going to move some of this. Yeah, I'll help you. Right there. Yeah. You think that's a professor? I'm afraid so, Chester. Poor old fella. He must have been asleep and his wagon caught fire. Maybe. Funny he couldn't get out, though. Unless he was drunk or something. Professor Bone didn't drink, Chester. That's right, I forgot. He sure didn't. 
say you think maybe somebody did this, Mr. Dillon? Well, he had two or three men pretty mad at him. Yeah, or, or maybe it was Indian. Oh, not this close to Dodge. No. No, I guess not. I don't know, Chester. A lot of things can happen to people who get too lonely. Now, oh, come on, let's get out of here. We'll take care of him in the morning. <laughs> I got a horse to saddle, Mr. Dillon. I'm so hungry I could eat a whole hog. Well, all the hog you got this morning is cooking on that stick right there, Chester. Is it done? <laughs> that depends on how hungry you are. It's done. <laughs> sure will be good to get back to Dodge tonight and sleep in a bed again. Well, civilization's made you soft, Chester. Mm hmm. Maybe so, but I get mighty tired of using my back for a mattress and my belly for a covering. <laughs> Obviously, Chester, you were born for greater things than rooting around on the prairie and living in the rain. It hasn't been raining, Mr. Dillon. No, no, it hasn't. But it will, Chester. Sooner or later, it'll rain. Yes, sir. Wish we brought some more bacon. Say, don't old man Granby live around here? Maybe we could borrow a little from him. Well, according to what I've always heard, old Granby wouldn't loan anybody anything. Mm. You really think he's a rich miser, like to say? Oh, I don't know, Chester. Well, sometimes a man's entirely different from his reputation. I only met Granby once or twice. He seemed like a nice enough old fellow, though. Well, I wouldn't want to live out here all alone with nothing but a few horses for company. Oh, he's used to it. Well, even if he does have a lot of money hid away, there's no place to spend it out here. Granby's pretty old for the pleasures Dodge has to offer, Chester. Well, I hope I am never that old. At the rate you're burning yourself out, Chester, you never will be, so don't worry about it. Oh, now, Mr. Dillon, I live mighty quiet for a young fellow who's free and still full of blood. <laughs> sure. Hey... Look over there. Huh? Now, that string of dust laying right on the ground there. Yeah, I've been watching it, Chester. It's not on the ground, though. There's a dry wash runs along there. Somebody's driving stock down it. Maybe it's old man Granby. That may be. Let's go say hello, huh? All right, sir. Sure. If it is old man Granby, we... Might just ask him about a little bacon, huh? Well, we can ask. There's no harm in that. Oh. Come on. Now, that's horses down there, Chester. Yes, sir. I can see their heads now. I don't see anybody driving them. Now, he'll be along in a minute. Now, let's wait here. There he comes. Yeah. Hello! He stopped. That's not old, Granby. Let's ride down and say hello anyway. Oh. Now, that's Granby's brand on those horses, though. He must have hired him a hand. Yeah, maybe. for Granby? No, I ain't working for nobody, mister. Oh? And where is he? Where is who? Granby. 
I don't know no Granby. Well, those are his horses you're driving. Oh, they are? Yeah. I ain't driving them. What do you mean? They got ahead of me in the wash here, that's all. I see. You a cowboy? Yeah, sure. I'm a cowboy. Well, you don't look like one. You don't ride like one, either. You're asking the questions, mister. No decent cowboy would run another man's horses down a dry wash just because he didn't want to get up on the bank and ride around them. I told you, they got in front of me, is all. How come you're not carrying a gun? Does a man have to carry a gun? No. I'll bet you're the only man within a thousand miles of here who isn't carrying one. Maybe I got a better conscience than the rest of you. Maybe. Look, mister, you've run those horses about five miles off of old Granby's place. You want to give us a hand, we'll run them back. I'm in a hurry. It won't take long. The old man might be a couple of days finding them if we don't. You worry about him. I got to get into Dodge. We'll ride in with you. Afterwards. I ain't going to do it. Look a lot better if you did. I, uh, I'd like to, mister, but I can't wait. I'm leaving now. So long. You gonna let him go, Mr. Wait Jones? a minute, Chester. I'll let him hear what lead sounds like. Now, don't shoot! Don't shoot me! All right, then ride back here. Don't kill me, mister. I'm not gonna kill you. Unless you try to run away. Why would I try to run away? You just did. Chester. Yes, sir? Ride down the bank and have those horses off. Start them back up the wash. We'll be out of here by the time they're back. All right, Mr. Dillon. You stay right close to me, fella. And don't try anything smart. When we get to Granby's, if he says it's okay, then you can go wherever you like. I don't know Granby. Never been there. Well, we'll show you the way. Come on, let's get up on the bank. <laughs> Old man Granby can find his horses all right now, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. But I want this cowboy here to meet him. We'll see if he's in the house. I'll wait for you. Get off that horse, fella. Go on. That's better. Come on. We'll take a look. Well, what are you waiting for? Nothing. You go ahead, Chester. Yes, sir, Mr. John. Looks like I'll have to herd this man in. You've been kind of balky ever since we ran into you, mister. I don't like being dragged around. I never did. I just want you to meet old Granby. He'll be grateful for you, helping run his horses back here. I know what you think, mister. You think I was stealing them horses. Well, I never heard of the old man. I was never near this place. Yeah, so you told me. But you're here now. I ain't afraid of you or nobody. Then let's go into the house. Come on. Mr. Dillon? Yeah, what is it, Chester? Old man Granby, he... He's in there. Oh, what's wrong? Right in the room there, Mr. Dillon. He's hanging there. What? Somebody's gone and hung him right in his own house. I, I don't want to see him anymore. You go take a look. Pull your gun and hold it on this man, Chester. If he makes a move, shoot him. Yes. Now, you just stand there real quiet like. I ain't gonna do nothing. You sure ain't. And just because I happen to be in the country don't mean I killed nobody. Mr. Dillon will decide about that. 
Who is this Mr. Dillon, anyway? He's a United States Marshal, that's who. A Marshal? Looks like you run into the wrong people, fella. I'll hold your gun, Chester. Search it. All right, you. Here. Get around. All right. right. Turn around. The house is all torn up. He must have been looking for old Granby's money. I was never in that house. There's nothing on him. Not a thing. All right, Chester. Here's your gun. Catch it. Thank you. All right, now, what's your name, fella? Tremble. Joe Tremble. Where are you from? Up north. Up north where? All over. What are you doing down here, Tremble? Making a change. Yeah, sure. And some cowboy you ran into told you about Granby being rich. So you came here and kicked the old man around and hung him. And then tried to find the money. That's a lie. This is the first time I was ever near the place. I'm sure you did it, Trumbull, but I wish I had more evidence. A court of law just might not convict you the way things stand. You gonna let me go? No. I'm arresting you. And you're gonna stand trial. And I'll do my best to see you hung. I didn't do it, I tell you. And I'll go free, too. You'll see. There's something mighty wrong about you, Trimble, and I can't figure it at all. But I'll sure find out. Joe Tremble dig a grave up behind the house. Then we laid old Granby in it and covered him with dirt. I was pretty sure now that the old man had never had an extra dollar in his life and that he'd been killed for no reason at all. Anyway, Tremble had done a pretty thorough job looking for the money and he'd found nothing. On the ride into Dodge, I tried to figure out just what he was. But he didn't seem to fit anywhere. He wasn't a cowboy or a hunter or a gambler or even just a drifter. After we got him locked up in jail that night, Doc and I went over to the Texas Trail for a drink with Kitty. And I was telling him about it. Now then, uh, this fella Trimble, um, how old is he? Oh, around... 25, I guess, Doc. Mm-hmm. Then he couldn't be running away from home. <laughs> no, he's a little old for that, Kitty. Well, anyway, they'll hang him. Well, I hope the judge agrees with you, Doc. Why shouldn't he? All I got so far is circumstantial evidence. But then you should have shot him out on the prairie. <laughs> it's a good thing you're not a lawman. Doc. Well, maybe if I were, there'd be fewer killings around here. Uh, I, I doubt that, Doc. You going up to Hayes for the trial, Matt? Yeah, I'll have to, Kitty. That'll take a week, I suppose. Oh, Bob. Why, yes? Nothing, only you've just been away for ten days. Well, I have to earn a living, Kitty. You could make more money gambling right here in Dodge. Oh, no, Kitty, don't start that. Good evening, Marshal. Oh, Major. Ah, Good evening, Doc. Good evening, Major. Ah, I do, Major. I'd like a word with you, Marshal. Uh, sure, Major. <laughs> so we can go over to the bar then. All right. Uh, I'll be back, Kitty. Doc. No hurry, Matt. Doc's got a lot of money. Oh, I, now I'll buy you one drink, Kitty. Just one drink, and that's all. Well, it's a start, Doc. <laughs> Let's go, Major. I had to come to Dodge on other business, Marshal. But I wanted to pass the word to you that we're looking for a man. Oh, the army? Yes, a deserter. Oh? Not from Fort Dodge. Where was he stationed, Major? He was with the 7th Cavalry at Fort Lincoln. Oh, up in the Dakota. Uh, and for some reason, they think he headed south. Now, I don't have much of a description of him, just that he was a private, about... Four twenty-five, curly blonde hair, and uh, he had a scar on his left hand. 
Yeah, that fits. What's his name, Major? He enlisted as Joe Gould, but he's known to have used the name Trimble. Uh huh. Well, he's right here in Dodge. You what? I got him locked up in jail. <laughs> well, uh, that's fine, Marshal, but how did you know? I think he murdered an old man who lived a day's ride north of here. I'm going to have him tried for it. Now, that won't be necessary now, Marshal. I'll take over custody of him. No, no. Huh? Then he'd be tried at Fort Lincoln for desertion. I want him tried for murder. And i got to be there to present the evidence. You could go up to Fort Lincoln. Now the Dakotas are out of my territory, Major. Besides, this is a civil crime. The Army wants that man, Marshal. I'm sorry, Major. He's going to be tried in Hayes first. He is still a soldier, even if he did desert. Well, if the judge lets him off, you can have him. But not otherwise. Major, he tortured and hung an innocent old man, and I'm going to do my best to see him punished for it. Well, I'll have to take this up with my superiors, Marshal. Uh, you better hurry. I'm going to Hayes with him tomorrow. I hope you won't regret this, Marshal. I won't, Major. Not if Trimble is properly punished. I won't. <laughs> I didn't wait till morning, but started out for Hayes with Joe Trimble that night. The trial lasted a week, and in spite of all the arguments I made, a judge finally decided that there wasn't enough real evidence to convict him. I even tried to make Trimble confess, but he was too smart for that. So there was nothing to do but bring him back, turn him over to the Army. I sent word to Fort Dodge, and the next morning, the Major himself appeared to take him into custody. Well, Marshal, it looks as though you didn't have much of a civil case after all. Uh, He killed old Granby. I know he did, Major. But after all, the law's the law. Yes, and in the Army, orders are orders. I'm just sorry your judge didn't convict him after all. Oh, is that so? Uh, Chester. Yes, sir? Bring Trimble out, huh? All right, Chief. Major, I'll give the Army credit for one thing. Uh What's that? Trimble and I rode back some 80 miles yesterday, and when we got here, he (laughs) wanted to sit up and play cards with Chester. Uh, There may be some bad men in the cavalry, Marshal, but they're all tough. Here he is, Mr. Dillon. Well, he's yours, Major. Private Trimble, sir. You're under military arrest, Private. Not privileged to salute. Besides, you enlisted as Private Gould, not Trimble. Yes, sir. Report to the guard outside. Yes, sir. Uh, Just a minute, Trimble. You uh, know that you're mighty lucky, don't you? You should have died for what you've done. I told you I'd go free, Marshal. It'll catch up with you someday, Trumbull. It always does somehow. That's all I wanted to say. Yes, sir. Well, thank you, Marshal. I'll be getting along. Oh, uh, Major, hmm? uh, you said that uh, you were sorry that the judge didn't convict him. Why have you changed your mind? Well, I have orders from General Terry to return him to the Dakotas to Fort Lincoln. Well, he'll be tried there, but he won't be hung for just desertion. Now, oddly enough, Marshal, he won't even be tried for some months anyway. He won't? No. It seems that the 7th Cavalry needs every man available. They're leaving Fort Lincoln on an expedition against the Sioux in the northern Cheyenne. Oh, the Sioux, huh? Yeah. I wonder if old Sitting Bull is still the chief medicine man with him. Sitting Bull? Yeah. I never heard of him. But I expect the 7th will be heading into Montana territory. Well, if they're after Sitting Bull's tribe, they will. He's always had a large camp over on the Little Bighorn. That's so? Yeah. Oh, by the way, who's in command of the 7th Cavalry now? Oh, an officer I served under a couple of years. I never did care for him. A General Custer.
figure it'll take us to drive this herd into Dodge after we cross the Cimarron, Larson. Well, it depends on how hard you want to push him, Bryant. I hired you because I ain't been up here before. How far is it to Dodge? Oh, 50 mile, maybe. Uh, five easy days, then. I don't want to bring them steers in too poor. It's the men that's got poor this trip, not the steers. Uh, there's a lot of juice left in the men. Too much, maybe. Look at him. Oh, it's that old Indian that rode in a while ago. They're just having a little fun with him. They better take it easy. No telling how many warriors he's got waiting somewhere. Hey, Cotton! Tell that Indian to come over here. I want to talk to him. Yeah, he probably just wants a steer out of the herd. Well, I'm tired of giving good beef away. You, boss, my name is Tobiel. Tobiel, huh? What do you want, Tobiel? I guide cattle on trail to Dodge. We don't need any guide, Chief. I know the trail. I have letter from men in Dodge. Eh. You read. Letter tell you how good guide Tobiel is. Let's see your letter. Eh. Old time guide. Many years with Army. Big scout. Well, why ain't you still with the Army then? Too old now. But can guide cattle on trail to Dodge? Very cheap. <laughs> Why, you old liar. Tobiel never lie. No? Listen to this, Lyson. To whom it may concern. The name of this noble red man is Tobiel. He's a liar, a beggar, and a thief. What he wouldn't steal, a hound pup couldn't pull out of a tan yard. Give him some cold grub or a three-cent drink, if you have any about you, and then run him out of camp. <laughs> Signed, R. Durbin, J.C. Weiser. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they sure wrote him a good letter. No, 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 letter can't say that. They, my friends, they write letter, help me get job. What'd you try to steal off of them? Tobiel never steal. No? Well, I'll take the word of a white man any day. Larson, you heard what the letter says. Have the boys run him off. Wait, let her lie. They fool me. Tobiel, man with much honor among white men in army. This ain't the army. Run him off, I said. Come on, chief. I leave. I leave. Alone. You leave, all right. And get going. Yeah. But these men die for this. If anybody dies, it'll be you. Here he is, boys. Let's send them down the trail. Here comes Miss Kitty. Ah, uh, so it is. Hello, Kitty. Hello, Mask. Chester. Miss Kitty? You're going to work a little early, aren't you? No. I'm just getting a breath of air. <laughs> sure is going to be a nice evening, ain't it? For you, maybe. Oh, is there anything wrong, Kitty? Just that trail heard across the river. Dodge will soon be full of drunken cowboys. All looking for trouble. <laughs> we'll handle them, Miss Kitty, don't you worry. Er, <coughs> at least Mr. Dillon will. Shooting them's easy. I gotta talk to them. Oh, you can always quit, Kitty. Sure. Do what? Teach Sunday school? <laughs> well, you might. You talk like a Texan yourself, man. You know what one of them told me once? He said I reminded him of his mother. He really said it. Well, that sounds nice, Miss Kitty. I thought so, too, Chester. Till he got real drunk and told me his mother was the first woman to be hung south of San Antonio. She was. 
Who hung her? Probably he did. Oh, now, Miss Kitty, no man would hang his own mama. Why, it just ain't... Marshal? Yeah. We come to warn you. Oh? Warn me about what, mister? My name ain't mister, it's Weiser. My partner's name here is Derby. I can tell him my own name, Weiser. Shut up. No. Marshal? That Indian's gonna get himself hurt. What are you talking about? That Indian, across the street there. See him? Uh Uh-huh. Now, that's Tobiel. You know him? What's the trouble, Weiser? He keeps following us around. Says he's gonna kill us. Tobiel? That doesn't sound like him. Well, it's true. Tis, you you ask me. He's been haunting us for four days. Just stands around staring at us and saying we're gonna die. I'd have shot him long ago, but I hear that's against the law around here. Where are you men from? Wyoming Territory. Where'd you know Tobiel? We've been in Dodge a couple of weeks. We've seen him around here. Now, what's the trouble between you? Well, we... <laughs> we played a little joke on him, is all. Made him mad, I guess. We told him he could get a job guiding trail herds into Dodge. Give him a letter. Yeah. He thought the letter said how good he was... But it really said he was a thief and run him out of camp. <laughs> I see. And he tried to use your letters, is that it? I guess so. Went away for a couple of days, and since he got back, he keeps saying he's going to kill us. It's getting on my nerves, Marshal. I'll shoot him, sure. You'll shoot anybody, and you'll hang for it, Wiser. Now, wait here. I'll go talk to him. I got to go to work, Matt. Okay, Kitty. I'll see you later. And you two heroes. You're pretty funny. I hope he does kill you. Why, you... Hold it, Weiser. Watch him, Chester. Yes, sir. Hello, Tobiel. Hello, Marshal. Tobiel, those two men over there say that you've threatened to kill them. Is that true? Did I... They told me the story, Tobiel. I'm sorry it happened, but uh, you can't kill men for that. Tobiel, old, but still proud. You know what'll happen if you do kill him, don't you? You'll go to jail and probably hang for it. No. Tobiel, never in jail. Man with much honor. Look, uh, Tobiel, I got no use for Wiser and Durbin. Neither one of them could be much good, but the law's the law, and... Tobiel, no kill... Tobiel's medicine kill. Make very strong medicine against them. Well, you work all the medicine you want, but don't you do any killing yourself. And stay away from them, Tobiel. You're making them jumpy. There might be trouble if you don't. Tobiel not afraid. They carry guns, Tobiel. All you've got's a knife. Remember that. Uh, I remember. All right. Tell him, Marshal? Yeah. You men didn't understand him. He's not threatening to kill you himself. He's making Indian medicine against you, that's all. Well, well, then why does he keep say, saying we're, we're going to die? And why is he always following us around? He thinks his medicine will kill you. I guess he wants to be there when it does. There's no harm in it. And I'm warning you again, both of you. You leave him alone. You do anything to that old man and I'll throw you in jail. Look, Marshal, that letter that... Uh started all this. That was Weiser's idea, not mine. It sure was. Any idea we've ever had's been mine. Oh? I never did need you, Derby. Oh, is that so? Who who did your dirty work up to Cheyenne? You did. Yeah. You fool. I sure did, and you still owe me for it. Ah, shut up. So you ain't gonna do nothing about that Indian marshal. I know Tobiel pretty well, and I'll personally guarantee his word. Nobody's gonna do anything about him. Including you. Good day, gentlemen. Mr. Dillon? Ah, good morning, Chester. Uh, good morning. 
Uh, Mr. Dillon, they just carried that fellow Weiser up to docks. What? Well, what happened to him? I don't know. Well, let's go see. Did you see him, Chester? No, sir. I just saw a couple men coming downstairs, and they said I'd better go get you. That's all they said. Oh, hello, Matt. What happened to Weiser, Doc? Well, for one thing, he's been stabbed, Matt. Oh? Bad? Bad enough to kill him. The men who carried him up here said they found him lying in an alley this morning. He's been dead, oh, three, four hours, I'd say. And there's something else, Matt. Take a look here. Why, somebody hit him on top of the head, Doc. No. No, they didn't hit him. He's been scalped, Chester. Indian style. It was pretty hard for me to accept the idea that Tobiel had murdered and scalped Weiser. But the evidence seemed plain enough. The old Kiowa had been a highly valued army scout for over 30 years. And then had moved into a little hut at the edge of Dodge when he grew too old for active service. He'd lived quietly. And had never given anyone any trouble at all before. But Weiser and Durbin had injured his pride with their so-called joke. And Tobiel had evidently reacted in the only way he knew. Now I had to arrest him. Chester and I walked out to his hut. And just as we reached it, Durbin came running up. We told you, Marshal, didn't we? We told you that engine was going to kill somebody. Did you see it happen, Durbin? No, no, I, I went to bed. Why, sir, he, he was doing a little gambling. That dirty red skin, he got him on the way home. It hasn't been proved, he did it. Well, of course he did it. Who else should scalp a man? I don't know. Well, here, look at that here, Marshal. Look at right here. There. Hanging right onto his hut like, like he was bragging about it. Well, Mr. Dillon, that's a scalp. Yeah. He's drying it in the sun is what he's doing. He's a murdering devil. You two stay here. I'll see if he's inside. Yes, sir. Come outside, Tobiel. I got you now, Tobiel. Let's string him up, Marshal. Right here. Shut up, Devin. Tobiel, did you kill Weiser last night? Weiser? Killed? Stabbed with a knife and scalped. He died. Durbin there, he died too. You see, Marshal, he even admits I told you to stay out of this, Durbin. Now tell me straight, Tobiel. Did you kill him? Tobiel, no kill. Two bills, medicine, kill. And what's Weiser's scalp doing there? Scalp? Right there. Yeah. Weiser's scalp, all right. Where's your knife, Tobiel? Here, my knife. Look out, Marshal. He'll use it. No, he won't. Give me your knife, Tobiel. Yeah. Yeah, That looks clean to me. Wait a minute. Well, of course, he's had plenty of time to get it clean. You think I kill Weiser with knife? Did you? Medicine kill Weiser. Tobiel, no kill. Now, Tobiel, I'm going to have to arrest you. You'll have to go to jail. Jail? No. 
Tobil, man with too much honor for jail. I'm sorry, Tobil, but you'll get a trial. Well, let's hang him now, Marshal. Indians don't need no trial. I'm the law here, Durbin, and don't you start anything like that. Big disgrace. Tobil in jail. Yeah, I know, but I... I can't help it. Chester. Get that scalp. We'll need it for evidence. Yes, sir. Go to supper, Matt? Yeah, I'll be right with you, Doc. Uh, Chester, you better stay here and watch Tobiel, huh? All right, Mr. Dillon. Uh, you can go eat when I get back. <sighs> I'll see you later. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, I hear Tobiel's pretty unhappy about being locked up, Matt. Yeah, I had a long talk with him, Doc. I'm afraid he's going to be locked up for a long time. Oh? Why is that, Matt? Well, no judge will hang him on circumstantial evidence. But he'll probably go to prison. He hasn't any kind of an alibi, Doc. None at all. And if I know Tobiel, he'd rather hang than be in prison. Yeah, I'm afraid you're right. What's that? It came from the jail. Come on. Mr. Dillon? What happened, Chester? Somebody shot Tobiel. Right through the bars. Is he dead? He sure looked... Let me take a look at him. All right, Doc. Get out the front, Chester, and come up the alley. Yell if you see anybody. I'll cover the back. Yes, sir. Mr. Dillon? All right, I'm coming, Chester. What is it? I saw Durbin. Oh? He ran out of the next alley and went into the Alphaganza there. All right, let's go get him. It must have been him that done it. Sure looks like it. There he is. Over at the bar. Get out of the way, Chester. Yes, sir. Darvin! under arrest, Durbin. Unbuckle your gun belt and drop it on the floor. What for, Marshal? For shooting Tobiel. Yeah, I seen Chester standing there when I come out the alley. Should have shot him, too. Never mind the talk. Drop your gun. No. Shooting Tobiel was a bad enough mistake, Durbin. You finding out I did it was. Uh, see... I figured Tobiel must have saw me get wise here, and at the trial, he, he, he'd, he'd have started talking. No. He was home, alone, making medicine against you. He had no alibi at all. Then I, I killed him for nothing? If you hadn't killed him, he'd have probably been convicted. And you'd have gone free. Uh, look, Marshal, you can't prove that I, I killed Weiser. No. <laughs> well, and I ain't gonna hang for shooting no engine, not me. Don't try it, Durbin. Why not? You... You hit him both times, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Want me to take care of it? No. Somebody else can do it. Let you and me go give Tobiel a real fine burying, huh? I figure we kind of owe it to him.
got the mail, Mr. Dillon. Oh. That uh, looks like official stuff, Chester. Yes, it is. All for you. Every bit of it. <laughs> Are you expecting a letter? Oh, no, sir. If I ever got a letter, it'd just mean trouble of some kind. Well, that's what my mail usually means. Yeah, not this time, though. No new wanted notices? Yeah, not a one. Looks like all the bad men have had a change of heart. Mm, sure does. There hasn't been a reward posted for anybody in over a month. Well, not that we know of, anyway. Mm. Uh, Mr. Dillon? Hmm? I think I'll go see if there's any beer left over at the Alphaganza. You join me? <laughs> no, thanks, Chester. Okay, sir. I'll see you later. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Well, hello. Tell me, is it all right to tie my horse here? Of course it is. Well, sometimes they don't like strangers being too bold. Well, there's mostly strangers in Dodge. It's a pretty big town. Heard a lot about Dodge. Good or bad? Bad, mostly. No offense to you, mister. Well, I don't own Dodge. <laughs> I'll, uh, buy you a beer. Well, I was just going into the Alphaganza here. You know, a fellow feels funny when he don't know nobody in the place. Oh, I've been that way many a time. Uh, where are you from, anyway? Colorado Territory. A lot of country out there. Sure is. Bartender? Wait a minute. Sure. Chester? Oh, Sam. Now, what'll it be, stranger? We'd like two beers, please. You must be buying. Yeah, I am. Why? Well, you don't look like you got any more than the price of two beers on you. Oh, don't mind Sam, mister. He gets spells like this. That's all right. It's all right, he says. And if it wasn't all right... Oh, leave him alone, Well, Sam. I My hate these gracious. saddle bums that ride a hundred miles to a fine saloon and then order a glass of beer. One thing I'll say for the Texans, they may cause a little trouble now and then, but they drink right. Well, I don't take whiskey myself, but I'll buy you one, mister. Oh, beer's good enough for me. Sam, you stay up too late nights. It sours you. It'd sour anybody. Waiting on a lot of riffraff. Hey, Sam. Sam, you better take it easy how you call this fella. I had, huh? You sure had. You know who this is? What do I care who he is? You're Lou Medellin, ain't you, mister? Lou Medellin? Why, sure it is. I seen him three months ago over at Colorado, at La Hunter. He was right across the street, and he just shot two men. Fastest thing ever happened. I'd sure hate to dangle with him. You really Lou Medellin, mister? I seen you right at the start, Medellin. That day at La Hunter. You sure built yourself a reputation since then. Oh, yeah, I've heard talk about you. <laughs> you don't look like a gunman, though, nor act like one neither. Well, they always said he was real soft-talking and polite-like. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm proud to know you, Medina. Uh, my name is Casey. How do you do, Mr. Casey? <laughs> Mr. Casey. Imagine Lou Medellin calling me Mr. Casey. Say, I, I sure would like to buy you a drink. No, wait a minute, Casey. I sort of owe this man an apology. The drinks will be on the house, okay? Well, that's kind of you, bartender. Sure, sure. I just want you to feel welcome here, anytime. Uh, Mr. Medell, uh, how come you're wearing your gun in the holster now? I always heard you carried it loose in your belt. I can handle it both ways. Yeah. Maybe you thought people wouldn't recognize you so fast wearing it different. It, it kind of marks a man right off carrying his gun in his belt. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it does. Say, I, 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 I'm sure proud to know you. I never got real acquainted with a, a man of your breed before. My pleasure. My, you sure are polite, Mr. Medellin. No need to be otherwise, I figure. Well, one thing, you make a lot of friends mighty fast. But then I guess that's easy for a man like you. <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes it is. Well, let's uh, move over to the table, gentlemen. 
We'll have our beer there. Uh, Sam. Sam, Mr. Medellin wants the drinks brought to a table. You bet. Be right there. <laughs> Say, I've been looking all over for you. Oh, uh, trouble? No, sir, but there sure could be. Did you ever hear of Lou Medellin? Is he in town? Yes, sir. He was right in the Alphaganza there about an hour ago. I had a beer with him. Well, what's he doing in Dodge? Did you find that out? Well, he didn't say, Mr. Dillon, but he is about the nicest, politest fellow you ever met. All I've heard about him is he started killing people a few months ago up in Colorado Territory. Yes, sir, he's a gunman, all right. Casey saw him in a fight in La Hunter. He's with him right now. Casey's a fool, Chester. Don't you be. No, sir. It's just that I never met nobody like him. Oh, he's so quiet and easygoing. Sure. I think I'll have a talk with him, Chester. Come on. Say, you think he's here looking for trouble, Mr. Dillon? Man like that's always looking for trouble. Well, yes, sir, I guess that's true, all right. That's him. Sitting right over there is Casey. I've got three more days here in town. And before I quit La Hunt, I said to him, I want to know sure that... You... <laughs> Hello there, Marshal. I guess Chester told you who this is, huh? This here's Lou Medellin, Marshal. Hello, Medellin. Greatest gunman in Colorado Territory since Clay Allison went to New Mexico. Yeah. I've heard a little about you, Medellin. Pretty new at this game, aren't you? Yes, sir. Pretty new. Casey didn't mention it, but my name's Dillon. I'm a U.S. Marshal. I represent the law in Dodge. Glad to know you, Marshal Dillon. Are you planning to stay here long? Well, I don't make plans much, Marshal. I thought maybe you were here for some reason. Oh, no. No reason. None I can think of, anyway. I see. Yeah, I'd hate to be in your shoes. You try to run Lou Medellin out of Dodge, Marshal. I told Chester that you're a fool, Casey. Now I'm telling you. Medellin's a, a friend of mine. You better talk easy to uh, me. Shut up, Casey. Medellin, this is just what I came to tell you. Trouble breeds around a man like you. Somehow it can't be helped. And I'm hired to keep trouble out of Dodge. Don't worry about me, Marshal. I'm not worried about you. Well, no, sir. Ain't nobody going to take Lou Medellin. Yes, there is. No matter how good he is, somebody will kill him one day. It always happens sooner or later. You may be, Marshal? Maybe. If he starts any trouble. There's nothing to worry about, Marshal. Don't you tell him a man like you ain't afraid of him, Medellin? Tell him. I think he knows that. Don't you, Marshal? I'm an old hand at this game, Medellin. You're new. But if you live long enough, you'll find out that being afraid isn't what counts. No? Well, what does? Worrying about it. The way you're worrying right now. I have a feeling you've been plain lucky so far, Madeline. But don't count on it lasting. I know what I'm doing, Marshal. What are you doing in Dodge, Madeline? I wanted to see the town. Isn't that all right? Yeah, that's all right. But the first sign of trouble and you're through here. Sure, Marshal. Sure. seen a lot of gunmen and killers in my time. 
And some of them were mighty peculiar people. But the strangest I'd ever run across was Blue Madullen. It wasn't his quiet, polite manner that bothered me, but the feeling I got that he wasn't very sure of himself or of what he was doing. I didn't see him again that day or the next until along toward evening. I was sitting in Doc's office when Chester came up and told me he'd heard Ab Fisher was in town. I'd known Fisher some years back, and I had heard a lot about him since. So I set out at once to find him. Having one gunman around was bad enough, but having two meant certain trouble. You going to look in the Texas Trail, Mr. Dillon? I might as well try it first. It's closest. Yes, sir. Oh, why does everything have to happen at once? Uh, nothing's happened yet, Chester. He's sitting with Miss Kitty, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Uh, stay here, Chester, and keep your eyes open, huh? All right, sir. Kitty, I'll tell you what I'll do. Oh, hello, Matt. Hello, Kitty. Uh, Dillon. Pull up a chair, Marshal. Oh, thank you. You look worried about something, Matt. Maybe it's because I'm sitting with his girl. You're sitting with me because you got the price of a drink, mister. That's not very nice of you, Kitty. Never mind, Madellan. Tell me, do you know Ab Fisher? Ab Fisher? No, I don't, Marshal. Ever heard of him? Never even heard of him. Good. So long. Goodbye, Kitty. He's sure worried about something. I know he is. Ah, uh, don't pay any attention to him, Kitty. Have another drink? Where'd you get all the money? You didn't have much last night. Casey over there lent me some till mine gets here. I've heard that story before, too. <laughs> <laughs> Who's this? I've never saw him before. So you're Lou Madellan. Who are you? Ab Fisher. Oh, I'm beginning to understand this. You gentlemen will excuse me. What do you want, Fisher? Told me you were in town. Thought I'd like to meet you. Oh. Well, I'm glad to know you. I heard about you in Denver. Oh, sure, sure. They say you're pretty fast. Yeah, I guess I am. Madellan, it makes me uncomfortable to be around a man who thinks he's better than I am. Huh. Don't feel that way. Here, I'll buy you a drink. Put your money on the table. All right. There it is. And there's mine. I... I don't understand. One of us gets four drinks. The one that lives. What? Drama, Dylan. Go on, draw. No, wait. Listen, and I will. You, you killed him. You killed Lou Madellan. He ain't dead yet. But he didn't even draw. He never even tried. He had his chance. If he lives, I'll give him another one. Anytime. Right now, I'm going to have me four quick drinks. Hold it, Ab. Matt Dillon. Well, so it is. Don't try anything. Why should I, Matt? You're under arrest, Ab. What for? For killing Lou Madellan. They say you drew first. He was kind of pokey about it, and I had to. But you can't arrest me, Matt. It's murder, Ab. Guess you haven't heard. Lou madellan has got a price on his head. He's wanted in Denver for his shooting a few citizens while he was robbing a bank. Dead or alive, Matt. I'll get $1,000 for this. Is that true? 
Yeah, that's true. You're no good anymore, Ab, but at least you never tried to lie your way out of anything I know of. If it wasn't true, Matt, I'd have tried to shoot you. I'll telegraph about it. But meanwhile, you'll have to sleep in jail. Sure, Matt. Save me the price of a room. Oh, Casey, don't stand there. Get Medellin over to Doc's. Here it is, Mr. Dillon. They finally answered your telegraph, and Ab Fisher's right. $1,000 for Lou Medellin, dead or alive, and it's signed by the sheriff up in Denver. Will I tell Fisher about it? Uh, no, let him wait a while. He isn't worried anyway. I'm going to go up to Doc's and see if Madullin's still alive. Yes, sir. How is he, Doc? Oh. Oh, well, he's alive, Matt, but not for long. Can he talk? Oh, he can talk all right, but when he goes, he'll go fast. There's nothing more I can do for him. Where have you got him in the back room? I thought he'd be quieter there. Come in with me, Doctor. Sure, man. Sure. Marshal Dillon's here, Medellin. Hello, Marshal. How are you feeling, Medellin? Poorly. I ain't going to make it, Marshal. That fellow shot me up bad. Yeah. Uh, Madell and I want to ask you something about last night. Oh. Then you found out. No, I haven't found out, but maybe you'll tell me. Why didn't you draw on Ab Fisher? I... I was too scared, like you said... I tried to tell him about everything, but he shot me before I could talk. Well, that doesn't make sense. How could you have killed all the men they say you have acting the way you do? Marshal, I never killed a man in my life. What? No, sir. I'm just a poor cowboy. I got fired my last job, and I thought maybe I'd find something to do around here. What are you talking about? It's the truth. I ran into them fellas at the bar. They thought I was a big gunman. And they gave me a lot of respect, Marshal. I never had no respect before. From nobody. Oh. Well, uh, what is your name? Coots. Dubby Coots. Uh, Dubby Coots. Well, I thought something was wrong. Guess I... I look like that Lou Medellin, don't I? Are you fooled Casey anyway? <laughs> but I sure couldn't act like them. I'm in bad shape, Marshal. I'm sorry, Coots. It's all right. First time in my life, I got me respect. But I first... <laughs> He's dead, Matt. Dubby Coots, huh? Poor devil. Yes, it's, uh, it's kind of sad, Matt. Yeah. It's going to be kind of sad for Ab Fisher, too. Now I got to go tell him that he killed an innocent man. And he'll probably hang for it. He's going to be mighty disappointed.
nice day, man. Well, the wind's gone down anyway. Uh, it sure was blowing last night. Uh, where were you, Doc? Uh, out at the Caldwell place. Mrs. Caldwell's expecting. Still? Uh, there was a false alarm last night. Oh, you ought to get some sleep while you can, Doc. Yes, I know. That's right where I'm headed. Doc Adams. Oh, hello, Ruth. I've been looking for you, Doc. Uh, Matt, this is Ruth Tucker, Sheely Tucker's son. Oh, hello, Ruth. Well, we ain't met before, Marshal. No. How's Sheely these days? Uh, he's just like ever. But it's Ma I come to get Doc for. Well, what's the matter, Ruth? You know, she swallowed a nail, Doc, and it's hurting her bad. Mm, swallowed a nail, did she? Uh, how'd she do that? I told her not to, but she was fixing the chicken house anyway, and she had some nails in her mouth. Oh, you say it's hurting her. It's her stomach. She's got a terrible pain in her stomach. Oh, that's bad. I, uh, I'll, I'll ride out with you right away, Ruth. As soon as I get my tools, may have to operate. You know Pa, Doc. You know how he is. Oh, yes. I forgot about him. Sheely doesn't like doctors, does he? He hates them. But he ain't there now. He's been out on the prairie the last couple of days. Oh? When will he be back? I don't know for sure. But Ma said to get you anyway. She doesn't want to die. She'd need to cause trouble if he found me there, wouldn't he? He sure would. He'd beat you half to death. Well, maybe I better ride out with you, Doc, just in case Sheely comes home while you're there. Good idea, Matt. I think you better. Yeah, uh, Ruth, uh, go over to the Alifraganza and tell Chester I want him to go with us, will you? Sure, Marshal. <laughs> Chester. Doc's still working on her. Well, there's no sign of Sheely anyway. Well, that's some help. What's the matter with a man like that, Mr. Dillon? Hating doctors the way he does? I don't know, Chester. Probably there weren't any doctors around when he was young. And what was good enough for his father is good enough for him. Some fool notion like that, maybe. Sheely always was a mean old cuss, except for his horses. He's always treated horses like they're human. Did you ever notice that? Oh, Sheely isn't really a bad man, Chester. He's just ignorant and prejudiced because of his ignorance. If he'd have been here, he'd let Miss Tucker die rather than have Doc operate on her. Yeah, probably. Well, that's bad. To me, it is. Maybe if Doc saved him someday, he might get over his ideas. Oh, Sheely's never had a sick day in his life, I know of. Oh, Doc, you all through? Huh? Oh, Yes, yes, I'm all through, Matt. How is she, Doc? Yeah. She's dead. Dead? Well, I guess her heart couldn't take it. I, I don't know. I, I had to operate, though. She'd have died sure if I hadn't. Oh, it isn't your fault, Doc. You did all you could. I know, but... I always feel maybe if I'd have done it better, things like this wouldn't happen. Well, you're not to blame, Doc. You, uh, want me to tell Ruth? Yeah, I've already told him. He's in there with her. Oh, how'd he take it? Yeah, he, he didn't say a word, Matt. Well, we better be getting back to Dodge, I guess. Yeah, you must be plumb wore out, Doc. Yeah, I am. Doc. Hey. Eh? Uh, yes, Ruth. And you too, Marshal. You're going to have to help me. Well, we'll help you, Ruth. What is it? It's about Pa. I don't know what to tell him when he comes back. Say, hey, that's right. I... I... Kind of keep forgetting about him. Just tell him the truth, Ruth. Doc tried to save your mother, but he wasn't able to. Nobody could have. You don't know Paul very well, I guess. He just won't stand for it. Well, there's nothing he can do about it now. It's all over. 
Not for him, it won't be. Mm, uh, what do you mean, Ruth? Well, when Pa says a thing, he means it. And he said none of us was ever to go near a doctor. Ruth, do you agree with your Pa's thinking? No. And neither did Ma. But we didn't dare cross him when he was around anyway. I'm afraid of him, Marshal. You'll have to stay here and tell him. Yeah, well, I, I can't stay. I, I have to get over to the Caldwell place. That baby's due any time now. But you can't go uh, on. All right, Ruth, all right. I'll stay here till he comes back. Uh, Chester, you better ride into town in case anybody's looking for me, huh? All right, you, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, it's a funny thing. How a doctor can lose one life and maybe bring another into the world all on the very same day. Yeah. Come on, Chester. We can ride partway together. That ought to do it, Ruth. I want her buried good, Marshal. How about a, a cross? You want to put up a cross? Now let Pa decide that. Uh, oh, my gosh, Marshal. Here he comes now. Yeah, looks like he's been riding pretty hard. Pa always rides hard, but he takes mighty good care of his horses all the same. He's never hurt one yet. I know. Hurry, hurry, boy, hurry. Oh, there, Marshal. How are you, Sheely? What are you doing out here? What's this? Sheely, uh, your wife died. Ruth and I just finished burying her. She died? Uh, just a few hours ago. We didn't know when you were going to get back, so we went ahead and buried her. What'd she die of? Uh, she was holding some nails in her mouth, and she swallowed one of them. Ooh. Roof, take this horse into the barn and dry him off. Sure, Paul. Rub him good now. I will, Paul. Don't let him near no water yet. I won't. What are you doing out here, Marshal? I came out with Doc. With who? Doc Adams, he did everything he could to save her life, Sheely. He cut on her, didn't he? He tried to get the nail out, if that's what you mean. She'd have died from it if he hadn't. Cutting on her, that's what killed her. Look, Sheely, your wife was dying and Doc tried to save her. That's how it happened, no matter what you think. I've got no use for doctors. They're all croakers. That's what my old man called them, croakers. I kind of figured that's where all this came from. Sheely, have you ever thought that your old man might have been wrong? Not about them, he wasn't. Hey... How'd Doc get here anyway? Who told him to come? Your wife wanted him. After all the times I've told her to stay away from doctors... I guess she didn't want to die, Sheila. She wanted a chance to live. Yeah, sure. And he'd come out here and killed her. Poor defenseless woman. Doc Adams will pay for this, Marshal. I'm telling you right you now. You lay a hand on Doc and I'll run you out of the country, Sheely. Maybe it won't be a hand I'll use, Marshal. Try anything like that and you'll hang for it. I'll find you no matter where you go. He killed my wife with his bungling butchery. He's a murderer. There isn't a man in Kansas who'd believe that. Doc's a pretty valuable citizen around here, Sheely. Not to me, he ain't. It's an eye for an eye, Marshal, like it says in the good book. You even try it and I'll throw you in jail. I don't try nothing. Then you'll hang. Will I, Marshal?
I left Sheely Tucker standing by his wife's grave. And I rode back to Dodge. There was no use trying to convince the man that doctors aren't bunglers and murderers. I figured he'd have to experience the truth himself somehow. And there wasn't much chance of that, the way things stood. But what really worried me was his threat to get Doc. Ordinarily, Sheely was peaceable enough, but there was no telling what he might do now. Doc stayed at the Caldwell place that night and the next day, too. I thought he'd be safe there, and I didn't worry about him till the next evening. Kitty and I were having supper at the Dodge house. Matt, for a town that lives on the cattle trade, you'd think we'd be able to eat decent steaks. <laughs> you should have had the prairie chicken, Kitty. You didn't have to walk all the way from Texas. <laughs> that steak I had got carried. It was too old to walk. <laughs> I've never eaten prairie chicken, Matt. What's it taste like? Oh, a little chicken. A lot of prairie. <laughs> if I didn't know you better, I'd say you've been drinking. If I know you, you'll order a steak next time anyway. I don't give up easy, Matt. Yeah, I know. Remember it, then. Sure. You don't know much about women, do you, Matt? Well, I'm learning. Yeah. But at the pace you've set, I'll be in my grave before you're out of first grade. Well, it took me ten years to learn how to handle a six-gun. Well... That's the nicest compliment I've had all day. <laughs> Drink your coffee. I gotta get out of here. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. Ah, oh, here's Doc. Ah, hello, Matt. Kitty. How's Mrs. Caldwell, Doc? Yeah, gave birth to a twelve-pound boy this afternoon. Ah, that's fine. Yes. Yeah, uh, that's not what I came to talk about, Matt. Somebody tried to shoot me on the way back from the Caldwell place. What? What? Who was it, Doc? Yeah, I didn't see him, and since I didn't have a gun, I rode straight ahead. Uh, fast. Where'd this happen? Yeah, about a mile the other side of the grove. I should have come out and ridden back with you, Doc. You should have, huh? Well, yeah, then, uh, you know something about this? Yeah. Sheely Tucker, huh? He came back after you and Chester had left, Doc. He made some threats. Yes, I might have known it, but... I'm not going to be a target for Sheely every time I go on a call in the country. I'm going out and see him, Matt. We'll have this out face to face. I don't think you can change his mind, Doc, but I'll go with you. And if he admits shooting at you this afternoon, I'll bring him back to jail. Maybe I'll bring him back anyway. Well, I should hope so. People around here would be in an awful fix without Doc. Well, then there's me too, Kitty. Oh, sure, Doc. I was thinking of you. We'll ride out in the morning, Doc. Yeah, good. There's somebody in the corral there, man. Yeah, it looks like Sheely. It is. Him and Ruth both. Come on. Oh, oh. Well, let's leave them here. They'll stand. Hmm. I got a horse tied down in there, Mr. Dillon. Now, he's down, Chester, but he isn't tied. No, oh, by golly, he ain't. Oh, say, look at that. Yeah, I broke his leg. Now, that's too bad. Oh, here we are. Oh, uh, Doc, I I'll go first in case Sheely gets excited. Oh, all right, man. Yeah. Go ahead, I'll close it. Hello, Sheely. Roof. Hello. You bring that croaker out here to kill my horse for me, Marshal? Uh, now, Sheely... Wait a minute, Doc. I'm sorry about your horse, Sheely. What happened? That bay's the finest animal I ever owned. I was just topping him off when he fell and busted his leg. No blame it. Uh, gee, that's too bad. It sure is. Roof. Go on up to the house and fetch me my rifle. Okay, Pa. A terrible thing to lose a horse like this. Sheely, if you like, I'll do the shooting. Oh, thanks. I'll kill him myself. It's my job. You know, it's a funny thing. 
We always shoot a horse if it breaks a leg, but we wouldn't think of shooting a man when he does. You croakers got other ways of getting rid of people. Yeah, I'll overlook that, Sheely, but I'll tell you something. I don't want to hear nothing from you. Well, you, you like that horse, don't you? Of course I do. Well, then, don't shoot him. What? Well, look, Sheely, that horse is done for anyway, so it won't hurt to let me try to fix his leg the same way I would a man. Just might work. You mean put a cast on him? I do. I never heard of putting a cast on a horse, Doc. <laughs> Neither have I. It's crazy. I don't like it. Hmm? It's up to you, Shelly. I wouldn't have let you near my wife if I'd been here. Why should I let you fool with my horse? All right. All right, Shelly. Shoot your horse. Then I'm taking you back to Dodge. What for? You're going to jail for trying to kill Doc yesterday. At least that's what Doc told me. Yeah, now, Matt, I didn't exactly Shut say... up, Doc. I ain't going to jail. I can't... Yes, even... you are. Unless maybe Doc changes his mind about charging you with attempted murder. Then I couldn't put you in jail. Oh? Yeah. No. No, yeah, he couldn't then. Uh, you know, Sheely, I... Might get so busy working on this horse, I'd, I'd plain forget about everything else. I might even save the animal to boot. Well, make up your mind, Sheely. I gotta get back to Dodge. Well, all right. But you better make it work, Doc. I said I'd try. That's the best I can do. Ever. No matter who the patient is. Okay, Doc, you try. But try real hard, will you? I always do, Sheely. Real hard. Chester and Ruth made a fast trip into Dodge for a plaster of Paris and some muslin to go under it. And when they got back, Doc went to work. An hour later, he had a heavy cast on the horse's leg. And after giving Sheely some final instructions, he was finished. He promised to come back in a couple of weeks and put a lighter cast on... And then we left. Sheely didn't say much, but I knew if anything went wrong with that horse, he'd be after Doc again. However, six weeks went by before anything happened. Doc and I were hiding out in his office with a game of chess we'd started a few days earlier. Yeah, doggone rook of you sitting there, Matt. If, if I move my bishop, you'll be right in on that queen. That's the only move you got, Doc. All right. There you are, Matt. See what you can do with it. <laughs> Couple more of those, and I'll get that quick. Doc. Well, hello, Sheely. Doc, I've been looking everywhere for you, blast you. Why'd you put a sign on your door saying you were out? How come you're wearing a gun, Sheely? Man, it'd be a fool not to wear a gun in this town, Marshal. He'd be a worse fool to try to use it. Don't rile me. I'm in a bad enough temper already. What's wrong, Sheely? Uh, how's your horse? My horse is tied up right outside, Doc. What? Yeah, I took that second cast off myself. Then I rode him in here. Of course, I took it easy with him, Doc, real easy. And he ain't even limping. Well, what do you know? <laughs> By heaven, it works. Oh, that's fine, but uh, what are you so heated up about, Sheely? Well, you'd be heated up too, Marshal. If you'd been carrying a rotten tooth in your jaw as long as I have... You mean you're looking for a doctor, Sheely? Uh, I'm man enough to admit it, Marshal. Uh, well, now, Sheely, uh, you just sit down right over there and I'll see what I can do. Okay, Doc. Hey, this is the one right here. Uh, try to get it out, will you? Uh, I'll try, Sheely. That's the best I can ever do. Ever. That's good enough for me, Doc.
Oh. Surely you're not Marshal Dillon. Well, no, surely I ain't, mister. Then please find him for me. He's busy. All right, I'll wait. Sure. You wait. Good heavens, man. You like it? No. Then listen to this one. I'll go out back and play it. Well, if I can hear it from there, I can hear it from here. All right, Mr. Dillon, if you feel that way, I won't play it at all. No worries. Good. Marshal Dillon. Yeah. I'm Philip Locke from Philadelphia. I arrived on the Santa Fe this morning. Now, you're a long way from home, Mr. Locke. Unfortunately, yes. But I came here for a purpose, Marshal. Oh, and what's that? I'm looking for someone. A girl, as a matter of fact. Well, there's lots of girls in Dodge. You shouldn't have much trouble. If you please. Shut up, Chester. Yes, sir. This girl wrote her mother in Philadelphia that she was teaching school here, Marshal. However, she's never been heard of at the school. Well, maybe she's moved on somewhere. But they say she was never at the school. I'm afraid something's happened to her. Well, a lot of things can happen to people out here. That's precisely why I've come to you. I want you to find her immediately. <clears throat> You're not in Philadelphia, Mr. Locke. But I'll keep an eye open for her if you'll tell me your name and what she looks like. She's about five feet four, and she's blonde. A very pretty girl. Uh -huh. Her name is Laura Simmons. Laura Simmons? Yes, do you know her? Uh, no, 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 he doesn't know her. Neither do I. But uh, I'll see what I can find out for you, Mr. Locke. Wh where are you staying? At the Dodge House, and I must say I've been in better hotels. Well, bad as it is, you wait there, huh? I'll come to you if I have any news. It's most urgent that I find her at once, Marshal. Uh, sure. Good day. What? Well, Marshal Dillon. Hello, Laura. Well, uh, come in, Marshal. Come on in. Thank you. Hello, Matt. Uh, well, well, Kitty, uh, I didn't expect to find you here. No, this is Laura's room, not mine. How'd you know I lived here, Marshal? You've never been here before. Well, I asked Sam downstairs. It's a wonder he told you. I think Sam's sweet on Laura. <laughs> Kitty. Well, I do. You two can gossip about all that later, huh? Right now, I've got some news for you, Laura. You have? Yeah, there's a man here looking for you. His name is Philip Locke. Philip? Hmm. In Dodge, oh, no. I figured it might be bad news. Well, I can't have him find me here. Well, he went to the schoolhouse first. And then I told him you'd probably moved on, but uh, he still thinks you're here somewhere. Well, I wrote Mother I was teaching school. He must have gone to see her. Well, if you don't want to see him, honey, you don't have to. I can't see him. I can't have him know I work in a, a saloon. It's nothing to be ashamed of. I know, but... Well, you see, I... I was engaged to Philip once before I left Philadelphia. We were about to be married when his family found out that my father had been a riverboat captain. I, I should have told them before, I guess, but... Well, anyway, they called off the wedding and I was so ashamed I ran away came out here finally. What about Philip? What'd he do? <laughs> the Locks are very aristocratic family, Kitty. I guess he had to do what they wanted. Not much of a man, if you ask me. Aristocrat or not. I was in love with him. And I think he was with me. Are you still? I don't know. How can I know? But he mustn't find me here. This is exactly the sort of life they said I was best suited for. His mother herself told me so. I've no nicer people than that on canal boats. I've got to hide somewhere. He'll go back and tell my mother and it'll just break her heart. I, I just can't face any of it. Uh, look, Laura, 
Why don't you go out to Ma Riley's until he leaves town, huh? She'll be glad for a little company. That's a wonderful idea, Matt. Come on, honey, I'll take you out myself. It's only a few miles. You're very kind. You might kind of spook him back to Philadelphia, Matt. (laughs) Well, I'll try, Kitty. Mighty warm beer for a nickel. I paid for that beer, Doc. I know, and I thank you for it, Chester, but I hate to see you not get your money's worth. Oh, well, I'll get it. When you decide it's time to buy us a beer. Oh, I'll buy, I'll buy. It's almost time, Doc. Sure, it's a good thing. Oh, tell me, Matt, is Laura still out at the uh, Riley place? You're shying away from the problem. But anyway, she's there. Doc isn't likely to leave town this soon. I saw him last night, and I told him I'd heard Laura had gone to Denver. Ah, uh, did he believe you? I don't think so. But I warned Sam to tell him the same thing in case he came snooping around here. Ah, uh, oh, it's a sad story. Poor girl. Well, she's better off without the likes of him, if you ask me. Women are strange, Chester. They fall in love, and that's that. I sometimes wonder if it has anything at all to do with a particular man. Why, of course it has, Doc. I remember what a little Kyle girl told me once. She said, Chester, she said... I didn't know you spoke Kiowa, Chester. Well, I don't exactly. We used a kind of a sign language, you know. And I can guess. Uh Uh-oh. Who's this? Marshal Dillon? Uh, Hello, Locke. I want to talk to you, Marshal. Uh, You've met Chester here, and this is Doc Adams, Philip Locke. How do you do? Marshal, I think you lied to me about Laura. Oh, is that so? It most certainly is. There's something mighty strange going on here, and I think you're mixed up in it. Now look, maybe Laura doesn't want to see you, if you thought of that. I'm going to see her if I have to kill you to do it. Kill me? Mister, you ain't even wearing a gun. I don't have to. What do you mean? I've hired a man who'll shoot anybody I say for $500. Ah, Philadelphia must be quite a town. You have until this time tomorrow to produce a marshal. And remember, I'm a man of my word. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you are. Well, of all the nimby-nambies. He's probably one of those who hired someone to fight in the war for him, Doc. It's all he knows. Look, Mr. Dillon. He's talking to Pete Noonan at the bar there. Pete Noonan? Is that his gunman? Well, looks like it. And of all the evil, no-good, drunken crooks, he ain't even much of a gunman. No. I always took Pete Noonan to be a little off in the head. He is, Doc. You never know what Noonan might do. He isn't like other men. That's what makes him really dangerous. <laughs> Philip Locke first hit Dodge looking for Laura. I didn't think he'd cause any real trouble. I felt sorry for her, of course, but I wasn't hired to settle love affairs, good or bad. And it wasn't until he hired Pete Noonan for a gunman that I began to get worried. Noonan was off in the head and about as predictable as a locoed steer. With him around, it made for a bad situation. But there was nothing I could do except wait and see what happened. Locke had given me 24 hours to produce Laura. It was getting close to the deadline when I went over to the Texas Trail. I saw her this morning, Matt, but she didn't say much about anything. The poor kid. Well, she can't stay there forever. And Locke hasn't shown any signs of leaving. Maybe she ought to go on to Pueblo or Santa Fe or someplace. Give her time, Matt. Yeah, sure. 
And I got nothing to do with it. Uh, Kitty. Oh, you too, Marshal. Now, what is it, Sam? Uh, one out back, both of you. Huh? What for? You'll see. I gotta go take care of the bar. Sam must be drunk. No, he's sober. Come on, let's have a look. All right. I still say he's drunk. Oh, Sam doesn't drink his own liquor. I don't blame him. I wish I didn't have to. You don't. I wouldn't if I lived on a little ranch somewhere, man. Had chickens and things. Uh, Sam's liquor isn't that bad, Kitty. Laura, what are you doing here? I made up my mind. Hello, Marshal. Laura? I didn't want to go inside just yet, so I've been sitting out here talking to Sam. You mean you're coming back to work? I've been thinking a lot about everything, and I'm going to face it out. No matter what anybody says. Are you sure you're right, honey? There isn't any other way to do it. Philip came here because he wants me back, and I won't lie to him. Well, I guess it's up to you. Where do you want to talk to him? Marshal, would you find him and bring him here? Out here? No, just take him to the bar inside. I'll meet him there. place to meet her. Yeah. Uh, Sam, mm-hmm. bring us a drink, huh? Sure, Marshal. We'll wait here. She'll be along. Well, Laura always was rather different. Here you are, gentlemen. Oh, thank you, Sam. Good evening, Marshal. Laura. Hello, Philip. Laura, that dress. You like it? What are you doing here? If you'll buy me a drink, Philip, I'll tell you. A drink? Of course. This is how I earn my living, Philip. You work here? Yes. Now, will you buy me a drink to start with? No. No, no. (laughs) Oh, never mind him, Laura. He don't mean nothing. He'll get used to it. Oh, see. Oh, no, it's just like what his mother said about me. It's true. Oh. Philadelphia. Well, what do they know in Philadelphia? <laughs> Lace on their pants. Here, Laura. Hey, have a drink, huh? Thanks, Marshal. I need it. Now, why don't you go home, huh? I'll get Kitty to take you. All right. Wait. Laura? Yes, Philip? Laura, I can't leave. I started to, but I can't. I came to find you, and I'm going to take you back with me. You are? Yes. This is quite a shock to me, of course, seeing you here in this place, but I can forget about that. I'll try, Laura. Will you, Philip? Yes, I promise. And we'll never mention it, ever. To your family, you mean? To anyone. It'll be a secret. It will? Always. If nobody knows, perhaps it won't matter. I'm not sure, Philip. I think it'll always matter. To me... I don't understand. Hmm. You wouldn't understand, mister. Laura, let's get out of here while we can talk. No. What? You heard her. She don't want to go. Will you keep out of this bar? No, I won't. What kind of a man are you anyways? This little girl's done nothing to be ashamed of except earn her living, which is probably more than you've ever done. What makes you think you're good enough to judge her anyway? That's enough. You'll try to forget about it. You ever think of anybody but yourself? You're no good, mister. Laurie here's worth a hundred like you. I'm proud of her. I don't care what she's done or, or who knows it. You're proud of me, sir? Of course I am, Laura. I won't hear any more of this. Are you coming, Laura? Oh, tell him, Laurie. Go on, tell him. Well? No, Philip. I'm not coming. I'm going to stay here. Mister, you heard her. Now get out or I break a bottle over your head. Goodbye, Laura. And you, bartender, you'll die for this. Don't try that, Locke. 
keep Noonan out of this. Nobody tells me what to do, Marshal. Noonan? What's Noonan got to do with this? Locks hired Noonan's gun. Oh, no. Well, he'll kill you, Sam. Uh, that Noonan, he's crazy enough, too. Yeah. He is, Sam. <laughs> Yeah, what is it, Chester? I've been waiting outside, like you said. Well, why aren't you there now? Well, because he's coming, sir, right up Front Street. Noonan? Yes, sir. He's alone, though. Yeah, I figured he would be. All right, Chester, after he comes, keep an eye on the door. Huh? Yes, sir. Sam. Well, what did you have, Marshal? Noonan will be here in a minute. Get out of sight. Well, I ain't afraid of him. You heard me. Now get out of sight. Okay, Marshal. I come for Sam. Where is he? What do you want him for, Nolan? I've been paid to shoot him. That's what for. You want to hang, Nolan? (laughs) I was born to hang. Where is he? Look, I'm going to throw you in jail for a couple of days. Maybe things will be clearer to you then. Come on, huh? No, Marshal. Don't do that. I've got to earn my $500. All right. But you'll have to shoot it out with me first. With you? What you got to do with it? I, I want nothing to do with you. There's a law against murder, Nolan. Well, I know that. Then what makes you think you can shoot Sam and get away with it? Well, I got $500. Right here in my pocket. Want to see it? Look, Nolan, see if you can understand this. Either you take your money and you get out of Dodge... Or you're going to jail. I ain't going to jail. You want a draw on me? I'm no fool. All right, then get out. Fast. Now go on. Move. You don't leave a man much choice, Marshal. Guess I'll have to go. Bye. So long. <laughs> well, you sure got rid of him, Marshal. Well, I hope so. But he wouldn't have had much of a chance at you anyway. What? <laughs> Look at Laura there. I wouldn't have missed him, Sam, even if he had got the Marshal. Well, I'll be it. Laurie, where'd you get that shotgun? It's yours. The one you keep upstairs, I borrowed it. <laughs> There's blood in this girl, Sam. Did she ever tell you her father was a riverboat captain? <laughs> well, uh, Marshal, huh? well, I- I'm closing bar. You-, you have to do your drinking somewhere else tonight. <laughs> It'll be a pleasure, <laughs> Sam. Yeah. Come on, Laurie, I, I-, I want to hear more about your old man. Sure, Sam. Sure. <laughs> Slow with that beer, Doc. I'm ready for another. You had enough last night, Chester. Matt told me you were still asleep at nine o'clock this morning. Oh, I was. And it was mighty kind of him not to wake me up. Say, are you sure he said he'd be back this afternoon? That's what he told me. So I. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Now, what in the world is that fellow? Who? He just came in the door there. With Tyler and Short. Oh, him, that weed Pendle. He rode in on a mule a couple days ago. Uh, well, which has the bigger ears, him or the mule? <laughs> oh, he is funny looking, all right. 
And he acts peculiar, too. That's a mighty scrawny mule, Pendle. I seen you on him this morning. Pendle here is kind of scrawny yourself, Short. Maybe some beer would fatten him up a little. I'd like some beer, all right. But I got no money. Why don't you sell that guitar of yours? Sell my guitar? No, I'd never do that. You must have a nickel, at least. Last money I had got stolen. Now, who dare steal money off a tiger like you, Pendle? I was asleep. I started to wake up, but they kicked me in the head. You call that a head? Looks to me more like your neck just growed out and haired over. <laughs> I ain't very handsome. You sure ain't. Hey, what'd your old lady think of you when she saw you, Pendle? I don't know. She died. Yeah, laughing, I'll bet. Oh, now, that's enough, Tully. That's too mean. Pendle's a harmless little fella. Ain't nobody talking to you, Chester. Well... Bartender, three beers. You buying, Tyler? I'm proud, too. A fine old soldier like Weed Pendle. How'd you know I was a soldier? I didn't. Where was you a soldier, Pendle? Third Illinois Cavalry. Illinois? You was with the Yankees. Well, I never done much. We had hard luck and never got to see no real Confederates at all. Just a bunch of ragged-tailed bushwhackers in South Missouri. They was led by an old chicken thief named Klein. Yeah, so there was. Tell me something, Pendle. Did you ever kill any of uh, Klein's men? A few, huh? before I got shot myself. They caught some of them after and hung them. But I never did see a hanging. You never saw a hanging? Nowhere. I never did. That's so. Well, Pindle, you're in luck. Since we was kind of in the war together, so to speak, I'm going to show you a hanging. Uh, you're about ready, ain't you, Short? My rope's on my saddle. I'll get it and meet you out back. There going to be a hanging? A real hanging? There sure is. You're lucky, Pindle. You run into us just in time. What are you talking about, Tyler? Who are you going to hang? It's a kind of surprise, Chester. You can watch, too. Now, uh, here, you know it's against the law to hang people around here. I saw Marshal Dillon ride out of town this morning. When he gets back, it'll be all over. And don't you try to buck me in short, Chester. You'll die if you do. Come on, Pendle. You don't want to miss it. Sure. What do you suppose they're up to, Doc? And I don't know, Chester, but I'd like to find out. Yeah, I guess we'd better. <laughs> I sure do yeah. wish Mr. Dillon was here. I never did think much of Tyler and Short. They play no good. I'm worried, Doc. Yeah, there they are. Why, it's Pindle. They got a rope around his neck. Uh, of course, you won't see all the hanging, Pindle, just the start of it. What are you hanging me for? I ain't done nothing. You was in the 3rd Illinois Cavalry. Well, sure. We was fighting under that old chicken thief, Klein, in South Missouri. It's a real pleasure to hang a Yankee like you. But I only done what they told me to. I didn't kill nobody on purpose. All right, now, wait a minute, you two. You've gone far enough. Shoot him, Tyler. You go shooting anybody, and you'll be the ones to end up on a rope. Doc ain't armed. He never is. Go on, Tyler. All right. You can try it. But you're sure going to have to kill me before you hang anybody. I'll kill you. You'll have to kill me, too, Tyler. Mr. Dillon. Oh, no, where'd he come from? Take your rope off that man's neck, Short, and do it quick. Sure, Marshal. Sure. I told you you shouldn't hang me. Oh, we was just funning the Marshal. We wasn't going to hang him. What's this all about, Short? Well, he's a Yankee, Marshal. Killed a lot of us in Missouri during the war. We was going to scare him and then run him off. Well, you forget about that. You forget about the war, too. It's over. The next time I catch you up to anything like this, you're going to go to jail. Go to jail? Over a dumb Yankee who don't own nothing but a skinny mule and a guitar? Get out of here, Short. And you too, Tyler. Okay, Marshal. But this Yankee better get out of here, too. Out of Dodge. Shut up, Tyler. I got moving. Sure. See you later, Findle. Findle, Marshal Dillon's here. He wants to see you. I sure do thank you for letting me sleep in your jail last night, Marshal. Where you been sleeping before, Pendle? With my mule. I always do. Huh? I, uh, hear you broke. What do you do for a living? 
I never did nothing much, Marshal. Just ride around on my mule. Well, what about your guitar? Don't you ever play and take up a collection or something? Oh, no, Marshal. I wouldn't do that. Well, why not? Can't, can't you play well enough? I don't know, Marshal. I never played it for nobody to hear except me. Ah. All right. Uh, Chester, take him over to the Texas Trail, huh? Maybe Sam can give him a job of some kind. Well, it wouldn't be steady, would it? <laughs> well, I don't know, but uh, why shouldn't it be? Because I'll be leaving in a day or two. Oh? Where you headed? Nowhere. Nowhere? Just ride around on my mule. I always do. And where are you from, anyway? I was born San Benito. Oh, on the Rio Grande? Yes. I left soon after. Took my guitar with me, though. Never did go back. Well, if you're from Texas, how come you fought in the Union Army? I don't know. One army's just like another, I guess. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe you're right at that. Uh, Chester, take him over to Sam's. Huh? All right, sir. I left my guitar back. I'll go get it. He sure is a peculiar little fellow, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, pretty helpless, too. You think Short and Tyler will bother him anymore? Well, knowing them, I believe they'd have hung him yesterday if they could have. Uh, you tell Sam to let me know if they even start talking to him again, huh? Yes, sir, I will. They're about the meanest pair of men I ever knew. Yeah, they are. And they'll think of something. Well, Pennell said he's leaving in a day or two. I hope that's soon enough, Chester. gave Weed Pendle a job sweeping up the saloon and let him live in a tiny shack out back. He tried to get him to play his guitar, but Pendle wouldn't do it. And we all began to think that he probably didn't even know how. It's hard to believe that anyone as simple as he was could learn to do anything. I looked up Short and Tyler and warned him again to leave him alone, and they did. Until one morning a couple of days later... Chester and I had just come out of Delmonico's and we're walking up Front Street. Look at there, Mr. Dillon, across the plaza. Yeah, I saw them. Let's go over there, Chester. It's Pendle and his mule, all right. Yeah. And Tyler and Short, too. I told them to keep away from him. What are they laughing at? Now, they're laughing, but he isn't. What do you suppose they've done to him now? Look at his mule, Chester. Well, That's what they've done. Oh, my goodness, Mr. Dillon. He's lost an ear. I thought Yankees you liked their mule that way, Short. At least I always heard they did. I guess they're just no pleasing some men, Tyler. <laughs> you shouldn't have done that to my mule. Well, it's the marshal again. The Jew men do this. Now, Marshal, we ain't done nothing to Pendle. Did they do it, Pendle? I tried to stop him, but Tyler held me. Then they gave me my mule's ear, Marshal. Right here. See? Yeah. Turn around, both of you. Turn around, I said. Now take their guns, Chester. Yes, sir. Can't do nothing to us, Marshal. We didn't hurt Pendle. Not I don't like what you did to his mule. I got him, Mr. Dillon. Now, Rich, you can turn around again. I ought to cut an ear off of each of you. But I can't do that. So I'm going to do the next best thing. <laughs> now, look here, Marshal. You... Now, leave him there, Chester. Pendle, I'm sorry about your mule. He ain't much of a mule anymore. Well, you better go take care of him. And maybe these two will leave you alone now. Poor mule. You 
know what Weed Pendle told me yesterday, Matt? Well, it could have been almost anything, knowing him, Kitty. No, this kind of makes sense. I asked him if he was ever lonely, and he said, no, he never stayed anywhere long enough to get to know anybody that well. Uh, he's a little strange, all right. Mm. Now what are they up to? Who? Tyler and Short. They just came in with Kendall. Oh? Look, Matt, he's got his guitar with him. Yeah. Hey, listen, everybody. Hey, listen, everybody. Little Yankee is going to play his guitar for us. At least he's going to try. Ain't you, Yankee? <laughs> Don't shoot my mule. We ain't going to shoot your mule. Not if you play good enough. Go on, get started. If you know how. They threaten to kill his mule, Matt. You gotta stop him. No, wait a minute, Kitty. <laughs> Go on, Pendle. Go on, play. All right. <laughs> Kind of surprised everybody, didn't he? <laughs> Tyler and Short don't look so happy about it. No. The crowd's with Findle now. Good. They'll leave him. Yeah, they better. Hello. You've been playing that guitar a long time in there, ain't you, Pindle? They wanted me to. They liked it. Well, me and Short been waiting to tell you how we liked it, too. Yeah. Let me see that guitar, Pindle. No. You hurt my mule. Give it to me. <laughs> I got a gun in your belly, Pindle. Don't move. I want my guitar. You can have it. I just want to sort of tune it for you first. Please, there. Please don't do that. Another thing that's wrong with this guitar, it's a little bit too big for a man like you. But I can make it smaller. <laughs> there you are, Yankee soldier. Maybe this will learn them. Let's go short. <laughs> Are they both dead, Doc? Oh, my, yes. Real dead. For several hours, at least. Why, they must have been asleep when it happened, Doc. Uh, it looks like Short there struggled a little. I guess Tyler got his first, and it woke Short up for a minute. He wasn't awake very long, man. Uh, just long enough to see who was cutting his throat, probably. Hmm. But he can't talk now. No. Yeah, I guess I'm all through here. What do you want to do with him? Well, we'll let the hotel worry about him. I guess it's Weed Pendle I want now. My, and him such a mild little fellow. Uh, any man can take just so much, Chester. I sure hate to see poor Pendle hang for killing these two buzzards, man. Chester, wait for me at the jail, huh? I'll bring him over as soon as I can find him. <laughs> Sam? Yeah, what'll it be, Marshal? Where's Weed Pendle, Sam? Oh, I just sent him out back for a bucket of sawdust. What do you want him for? Short and Tyler got their throats cut early this morning. Good. 
I guess their smashing his guitar was too much for Pendle. That's so. Oh, there he is now. Pendle, come over here. Morning, Marshal. Good morning. Pendle, where was you last night? I don't know. Here, I guess. You don't know. Now, wait a minute, Marshal. Pendle, where was you after they wrecked your guitar? Well, I sat in the alley a while, and I come back here. Yeah, that's right. And he was so broke up about his guitar, I didn't want to leave him alone, so I <laughs> took him up and let him sleep on the floor of my room. Isn't that right, Pendle? Well, go on. Tell him now. Sure, Sam. That's right. Are you trying to alibi for him, Sam? Well, I know, Marshal Dillon. But I care about him. Some people care about me. Who, Pendle? He's just talking, Marshal. Who cares about you, Pendle? Tell me. Those men. What men? He means some of the boys that was here when he come back with his busted guitar, Marshal. He just told him how sorry he was, that's all. I see. They liked his music, didn't they? Yes, they did. They liked to hear me play. Who was in here then, Sam? Well, now, Marshal Dillon, you know how it is. I'm busy pouring drinks, and I don't pay no mind to who's here and who ain't. I, I couldn't rightly say it all. Okay, Sam, I guess I can't beat the truth out of you. Oh, now, Marshal Dillon, who cares about Tyler and Short? Dodge is better off without There's him. There's a law against murder, Sam, and it's the same for everybody. And I'll be back later. What are you going to do now, Mr. Dillon? Well, I've done all I can, Chester. The whole town's just plain quit talking. Nobody knows anything. Well, I guess they're all trying to protect Pendle. Yeah, they are. But he didn't do it. Well, who did then? Well, if I could prove who did it, Chester, I'd have him in jail. The... Say, come over here. What? Well, I declare, Mr. Dillon, it looks to me like he's leaving town. Yeah, I told him he could go. He looks funnier than ever on that one-eared mule. Yeah. Now, well, Dodge treated Pendle pretty rough. It sure did. Poor little fellow looks kind of empty like that his guitar, don't he? Well, maybe you'll find another one somewhere. Anyway, I sure like to hear him play in this town. Yeah, a couple of the boys in particular, I guess. Yeah, they liked it just fine. trip from Hayes City to Dodge was long enough horseback, but by stagecoach, it seemed endless. There were only two passengers besides me, and after the first hour on the road, we stopped talking. Just sat there in silence, waiting for the ride to be over. I'd been up late the last few nights, so I braced myself into one corner of the coach and fell asleep. I vaguely remember the stage pulling to a stop and somebody shouting. But I came fully awake when the door was jerked open and a man behind a bandana stuck a shotgun in my face. Get out of the coach. Hands in front of you. Uh, It'll be a pleasure to blast you open. Uh. All right. Take his gun, Charlie. Yeah. Now, stand over there with the driver. You two next. Now, get on out and don't try nothing. 
How come you didn't start shooting when they stopped me, Marshal? Well, I was sound asleep, Hank. Well, I'm sure glad of that. If we put up a fight, that fellow with a shotgun would have blowed me clean off the seat. Yeah. yeah. How many of them are there? Just these two? That's all I've seen. Well, it could be somebody with a rifle hiding in that clump of elder over there. Could be... Ah! Ah, that'll learn him, Charlie. Hey, look. He killed him, Marshal. Yeah, the man was a fool to try that. Go get the box down, Charlie. Take this one to help you. Oh, come on, you. I'll keep an eye on these two here. So, you're a marshal, huh? I am. Well, that greenhorn got himself killed. He shouldn't have tried to shoot Charlie. No, he shouldn't. Not with a little derringer. Charlie got hit. Right in the arm. Yeah, I saw it. I just don't want nobody chasing us for murder. Under the circumstances, it was murder. It was, huh? Well, then the only thing to do is shoot the whole bunch of you and have done with it. No, you can't do that. Mister, I got a wife and two kids in Dodge. What I hear, Dodge ain't a very good place to raise a family anyway. Look, you're in enough trouble already. Besides, you didn't kill that man. Your partner did. Yeah, that's right. It's Charlie they'll be after. How much money is there in that box, driver? Yeah, I don't know. They never tell me. Well, we'll find out. He's got it open now. Load it in them saddlebags, Charlie. I got an idea. You're new at this game. Look, if a man was holding a shotgun on me and I was unarmed, I wouldn't have no ideas about nothing, Marshal. You always carry a shotgun, mister? Why? Well, we might meet sometime when you don't have one. You're gonna make me shoot you yet. Hey, look, your partner's ready to go. Okay. Uh, don't you make a move till we're out of sight. We'll ride back and kill every one of you. You understand? I guess there's nothing we can do but stand here. That's all, Hank. For right now, anyway. What'd you do, Kitty? Burn your mouth again? Oh, darn it, yes. What do you mean again? Well, it seems like you always do if the coffee's hot enough. Thanks for the sympathy. <laughs> it's as much as you gave me about the stage holdup the other day. All I said was I'm glad you were asleep. You're a lot safer that way. Now, being safe isn't exactly my main goal, Kitty. Yeah, I know. How much money was there, Matt? $2,000. You'd think they'd have paid a man to ride shotgun. Have you any idea who did it? No, they were both masked. I hear Wells Fargo put up a reward for him. Yeah, there's a thousand dollars for the one who killed the passenger, dead or alive. They must want him real bad. That's not good for business. People getting murdered. What about the other one? Uh, Three hundred for his capture. And uh, if you recover the stolen money, Kitty, well, they'll give you half of it. If I found that money, they'd give me all of it. <laughs> You'll end up in jail yet. Well, the Texas Trail isn't far from being a jail. For me, anyway. I gotta get back there pretty soon, Matt. Sure. Hey, you. Waiter. Come here and take this money or I'll throw it at you. Another gentleman in town. Uh, Kitty, I, huh? I don't want to turn around. What does he look like? Well, I, I think it's the one with the black beard You over there. heard me, waiter. Get over here before I bust your neck. Yeah, that's the one, all right. Is there anybody with him? No, he's alone. And he's leaving now. Oh, good. No, no, don't huh? stare at him. I don't want him to see me. Well, he's not even looking this way. He's going out the door, Matt. Uh, all right, huh? come on. I want to follow him. Okay. Is that him ahead of us there? The big man, yeah. Who is he, Matt? I'm not sure. But he sounds an awful lot like somebody I want. You gonna arrest him? No, not till I'm sure. 
Maybe not even then. Look, he's going up to Doc's. Yeah, so he is. Uh, Kitty, I'll leave you here. Okay. Thanks for the supper, Matt. Sure, anytime. Tomorrow? Well, I might be real busy tomorrow. I figured that. So long, Matt. Goodbye, Kitty. His arm is infected to me. Uh, how'd he do it? Well, he, he just tore it on some wire. Well, why didn't you bring him into town? It might be gangrene. Is that bad? Bad. Well, he could lose the arm or even die. Where is he anyway? Out on the prairie, the camp. Ain't there uh, some medicine or something I could take back with me, Doc? Oh, oh. Oh, hello, Matt. Good evening, Doc. Uh, uh, oh, go, go right ahead. I, I just came up for a smoke. Oh, sure. Sit down. Sit down, my man. Yeah. Ah, thanks. Now, look, mister. There isn't a medicine in the world. Never mind. But God. I'm telling you... Forget it. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Everything's okay. Yes. You better not wait too long. I'm warning you. I won't. We'll take care of everything tomorrow. So long. Ah, that man's crazy. That's what... No, he's not crazy, Doc. No, you should have heard him. I did. What do you mean you did? I was outside the door, Doc. Well, he's going under the Oliferganza. I guess he isn't too worried. What's this all about, Matt? Uh, Doc, I'll explain it to you later. Right now, i got to find Chester. Oh, Chester? Yes, he's down in the office. I just left him. Oh, good. I sure hope he's had a lot of sleep lately. What's that? He's going to be pretty busy tonight. I'll see you later, Doc. Well, did you follow him all night, Chester? Oh, Mr. Dillon, I'm about ready to drop. Everything's getting hazy. Where is he? In the restaurant there? Yes, sir, that's where he went. He gambled the entire night. I swear I don't know how he stays awake. I can't hardly keep my eyes open. Oh, rub a rouser or tobacco juice on him, Chester. That'll help. Oh, my goodness. He just come out the door. Yeah, he's seen us. Stand steady. Yes, sir. Marshal, I, uh, I got a complaint. Now, is that so? It sure is. I had an idea this man's tracking me all night had something to do with you. Oh, how'd you know I was following you? Mister, you might as well have been wearing snowshoes with cowbells tied on them. Now, that's not true. That's a dog on Never mind, now. Chester, I... never mind. What is your complaint, mister? Well, you... Can't a decent citizen ride into the Dodge and do a little gambling without being haunted by your man here? Well, that depends on how decent the citizen really is. What name do you go by, anyway? My own. Jermo. Jermo? <laughs> is that all there is to it? That's all. Yeah. Well, Jermo, I just didn't want you to leave town without my knowing about it. Why not? I ain't done nothing. Well, Doc told me about your partner. The one who tore his arm on some wire. What about him? Well, I'm curious to see if you're going to take care of him, that's all. Well, of course I am. He'll die if you don't hurry. Well, I... I'm going after him. When? Well, it's no business of yours when. And anybody following me is likely to run into trouble. From a shotgun, Chairman? I don't use a shotgun, Marshal. Your partner's dying, Jermo. You're wasting time. And he's dying. He's my partner, not yours. I'll take care of him. Sure. Sure, Jermo. But you better hurry.
Chester had been up all night, so I sent him to bed, and I hired a Kiowa Indian I knew to keep an eye on Germo. But even though his partner was dying of gangrene from the bullet wound he'd received at the stage holdup, Germo didn't leave Dodge that day, or the next. He knew I'd track him to their hideout and to the stolen money if he did, and he wasn't the kind of a man who'd risk his own neck just to save his partner's life. And since I had no real evidence yet, there was no use arresting him. So, all I could do was wait. That Indian is a wonder to behold, Mr. Dillon. He hasn't slept a wink in two whole days, and he don't even look tired. No, but Germo looked tired the last time I saw him. Oh, he's been sleeping regular. Yeah, I know. But all this is wearing him out just the same. And he's getting pretty spooky. Well, I should think he would, with what he's got on his conscience. I better ask Satank if he knows another Kiowa who could spell him for a while. I think he's got a cousin around here somewhere. Oh, it makes my bones ache just to think about him not sleeping at all. Marshal, uh... I, I I got something to tell you. Huh? Well, who are you? Well, my name is Verd, but I, I'm nobody, Marshal. Just a cowboy. Well, there's nothing wrong with being a cowboy, Verd. Sometimes there is. Like yesterday. Oh, uh, what's the trouble? Uh, I found a dead man, Marshal, out on the prairie. How'd he die? Well, it looked to me like he got shot. That's why I come to you. Did you bury him? No. No, I, I wrapped a blanket around him, though. Yeah. Where is he, Bert? Not far from here. Maybe 15 miles. Yeah. Chester. Yes, sir? Get our horses. We'll ride out and have a look. Yeah, yeah, he's still there, Marshal. Nothing's been eaten on him. He sure got himself hid out here. My, it's a wonder anybody ever found him. Uh, Bird, you, uh, you want to take the blanket off of him? Sure. There. Um, uh, how did you know he'd been shot? Well, his arm, it's all swole up, Marshal. And then, you see here, I noticed that bullet hole in his sleeve there. Yeah. Well, looks like you've made yourself a thousand dollars, Bird. What? Wells Fargo offered it for this man, dead or alive. He rubbed the stage a few days back. He did? Well, ain't I in luck. And there's another thousand for whoever finds the money he stole. It's probably buried around here somewhere, don't you think, Mr. Dillon? Hey, that reminds me. I noticed uh, something funny over there in them anthills. Like the ground being dug up. Show us, Bert. Yeah. Sure, Marshal. Right over here, wait. There. See it? Right there? Right by that big one? Yeah. Well, I declare. Huh. By golly, I think he's right, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, there's something been buried here, all right. Yeah. I think I can... Yeah, there there it is. There, I got it. Hey, looky there, Marshal. It's a, it's a money bag. And I found it, didn't I? Yes, sir. That's right, Bird. Here, look at that. That's real money, all right. Marshal... I found it, so I, I, I get the reward, won't I? Did I? I knew where it was. Yeah, you sure did, Burton. We dug up the rest of the money and then made the hole into a grave. And we buried the dead man right there. On the way back to Dodge, I told Verd he could talk all he wanted about finding the bandit's body and the reward he'd collect for it, but that he wasn't to say a word about the money we'd recovered. He couldn't understand why, and I didn't explain it to him, but 
I warned him he'd never get a penny of either reward if he didn't do as I said. Back in town, I didn't let him out of my sight for the next two days. I figured it'd make Germo pretty worried. And it sure did. <laughs> you know, it's mighty good to get off of that prairie just for change. Yeah, could think it would be. <laughs> you don't come to town much, do you? i never seen you around here before. Well, I, I've been too broke, Chester. Well, sir, it sure takes money to see the elephant in Dodge nowadays. <laughs> I'll be able to afford it soon enough. Ain't that right, Marshal? Oh, it looks that way, Bird. Yeah, you've been mighty lucky. <laughs> so far. What do you mean, so far? Nothing. Nothing. Evening, Marshal. Ah, oh, hello, Jermo. Uh, this uh, fellow who found your bandit for you? Yeah, I was just telling him how lucky he is. Yeah. Yeah, all that reward money... Thousand dollars, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Is that all you're getting, Mister? What do you What do you mean? Is that all? Well, there was more reward than that offered. Oh, you mean the stolen money? Oh, it's too bad about that, wasn't it, Bert? We, we didn't. We didn't find no stolen money. You didn't. Oh, but looked everywhere. There'd been some digging nearby, but uh, <laughs> there was nothing in the hole. Yeah. Well, now, what do you make of that? Just plain disappeared, huh? Yeah, yeah. Looks that way. Well, that's sure too bad, ain't it? But you can't have all the money in the world, mister. I ain't got all the money in the world. I'll see you later. Marshal, I, I, I did like you told me. I, I, I didn't say nothing. You did fine, Ferd. Just fine. <laughs> When we left the saloon a little later, I noticed Germo standing in the darkness of the alley, waiting. I was pretty sure he'd follow us as we crossed the plaza and walk up Front Street. When we reached Kelly's stable, Verd wanted to go in and see if his horse had been fed, so we said goodnight and left him there. Chester and I walked on a little ways, and we turned off the street. We went back entered the stable from the rear. Inside, we could hear voices. And we sneaked up from stall to stall until we were close enough to make them out. Tell me where the money is, Bird. What did you do with it? I told you, Jim. Well, the marshal's got it. We dug it up. You're lying. Now, who turned in $2,000 to collect $1,000? You stole it and hid it somewhere else. No, I didn't. I tell you. The marshal himself said there'd been some digging nearby. Now, what'd you do with it, Bert? Now, tell me before I kill you. No, no. Listen a minute, Jermo. Look, when you didn't come back, I figured you got caught. And then Charlie died and... I got scared. Yeah, you always was a coward. That's why we left you in the bushes with a rifle when we stopped the stage. No, that don't matter. But look, Germany, don't you see this way? We're both safe because I'll, I'll split both the rewards with you. You know I will. You're lying. And I'm going to kill you for it. No, now don't, Germany. Hold it. Come out. Come out. You're next, Marshal. <laughs> You should have had your shotgun, Jermo. I should have killed you with the hold on. That was my big mistake. No. If you'd have trusted Verd, you both could have got by with us. He was telling me the truth? He was. And you'd have never been convicted on what evidence I had. Well... I guess every man's entitled to, to make a few mistakes, Marshal. Jermo. Well, 
you won't make any more. Horse over here, Benson. Sure, Jake. Wait till we get him up on his horse before you tie that rope to wall. There'd be too much slack otherwise. Yeah. It couldn't hang you very good with your feet touching the ground, could we, Tillman? No, Jake, you couldn't. We've been neighbors a long time, Tillman. If I could figure some way to make the noose bust your neck, I'd do it for you. All right. But you get to hanging, I could put a bullet in you. I'd be beholden to you. Okay, I'll do it then. Would you drop by and tell my wife on your way home, Jake? Sure. I figured on doing that anyway. Thanks. I always liked you, Tillman. Kind too bad about this. Sure. You're mighty calm for a man with a noose around his neck. You men got your minds made up. Well, we can't have no man stealing horses around here. Would none of us feel safe less than we caught and hung them? I reckon I'd feel the same way, Jake. Of course you would. You'd hang me just as fast if I'd done it. I would. Only difference is I'd want to be awful sure it was you that done it. Oh, I'm sure. Heck, we caught you red-handed, didn't we? I told you a hundred times I found them horses running wild. I was driving them back to you. Now, Tillman, you was headed in the other direction. He got away from me. I was trying to turn him back. Except we don't believe you. None of us do. Well, ask Jennings. He saw me rounding them up for you. Jennings ain't here. Well, why don't you find him? Can't take the time. You delay a hanging, the first thing you know, the man's got loose. It just encouraged horse thieving. Like I said, you got your minds made up. We gotta protect ourselves, Tillman. Here's his horse, Jake. Get him on it, Tillman. Sure. Okay, Duval. Take up the slack and tie it. Hey, hey, look out there, Jake. Someone's coming. So they are. Let's get this done. We might have trouble. He's a long way off yet. We got time. You want to slap his horse, Benson? No. You do it, Jake. Okay. So long, Tillman. So long. Hello, Jake. Hello, Miss Tillman. Come on inside. Oh, thanks, ma'am. I'll stay out here. Suit yourself. My husband ain't here, Jake. He's out in the prairie someplace. I know. Clave's around, though. Want to see him? No. I wanted to see you. Me? What about? About your husband, Miss Tillman. Something's happened to him. Well... It was like this, ma'am. 
You know, me and Duval and Benson's been losing some horses lately. I heard. But Tillman ain't somehow. And when we caught him driving a bunch of mine this afternoon, we figured it was him who's been stealing them. I don't believe it. My husband's an honest man. I know that. Now, Jennings saw him rounding them up where he found them running wild on the prairie. I guess whoever had stolen them got scared and left them there. Where's my husband, Jake? That's what I want to explain to you, ma'am. Jeannie's come and told us about it. But he got there too late. Too... Too late? We'd already hung him. Hung him? Yes, ma'am. Clave! Clave, come out here! What is it, Mom? Well, hello there, Jake. Hello, Clave. Tell him what you done, Jake. Done? Clave, we hung your old man this afternoon. You what? We hung him for stealing horses. Pa? They found out he didn't do it. After. Yeah. I guess the joke's on us, all right. Wait, Ma. He's kind of upset, Clabe. You better go with her. Somebody ought to kill you, Jake. Now, don't talk like that. I said we were sorry. I got to get home. It's kind of late. So long. <laughs> Cheer up, Matt. Spring will be here in a few months. Yeah, sure. You're still bothered by the Tillman hanging, aren't you? He was lynched, Kitty. All right, lynched. You'll never find out who did it now. That was nearly three weeks ago. Well, I got a pretty good idea who did it. That I can't be sure. No? Who? Probably some of the ranchers out there who've been losing horses. Benson and Duval and Jake Kaiser in particular. Benson? I heard he got shot the other night, right in his own house. Yeah, I did. Just a week ago. Maybe his conscience was bothering him, Matt. No? Huh? What do you mean? Well, maybe the other two killed him to keep him from talking. Uh, maybe. Well, anyway, he had it coming to him. It's still murder, Kitty. You feel worse about Tillman, don't you? There's nothing I hate more than a lynching. And knowing Tillman, my guess is he was completely innocent. What about Mrs. Tillman and the boy? Do they have any ideas? Well, if they have, they didn't tell me. Well, you've done all you can, Matt. Yeah, yeah, sure. I might as well be in St. Louis. Huh? I like St. Louis, Matt. Well, why don't you go, then? I don't know. I guess I'm afraid of the dark. What? What are you talking about? Never mind, Matt. Oh, Matt. Oh, hello, Doc. Well, hello, Kitty. Sit down, Doc. Oh, thank you. Yeah, don't mind if I do that. See that fella Duval, Matt? Yeah, what about him? He's over in my office. What? Well, what for? He's been shot, Matt. Shot. Dead. What? His hired hand brought him in. What did this happen? Well, early tonight he said... You know, it's a funny thing, Matt. Duval was shot through the window of his house with a fifty caliber rifle. I dug the bullet out. Just like Benson. Yeah, I thought it was kind of interesting myself. That makes Jake Kaiser the only one left, Matt. Why, do you think Jake did it? I don't know. Well, he's been sitting right over there in a card game since noon. Uh, are you sure of that, Kitty? Well... I was gone for an hour, but he was there when I left, and he was there when I got back. Well, he couldn't have done it in an hour, Matt. No. Look, Matt, he's leaving. Yeah, uh, excuse me. I'll be right back. Oh, uh, Jake. 
Hello, Marshal. Uh, Jake, uh, let's sit down a minute, huh? I, I want to talk to you. Sure, Marshal. What's it about? Uh, here's the table. I'm kind of late getting out home. Uh, Jake. Your ball was shot tonight. He was? Yeah. Killed the same way Benson was. Same way? Uh-huh. You, uh, know anything about it? Well, I'm beginning to, Marshal. Is that Tillman boy, Clabe. I know it is. Why would he do it, Jim? Oh, he's crazy, that's why. Marshal, I'll tell you. Clabe's took it into his head that we hung this old man. Oh? Huh? How do you know he has? I saw him right here in town this morning. And he was here last Saturday, too, come to think of it. You talk to him? Sure. And he keeps saying that we done it. Why? Don't you believe anything he says, nor Miss Tillman either. They're both liars, Marshal. <laughs> I've known them a long time to be liars. Jake, did uh, Clabe threaten you? Sure he did. You go arrest him, Marshal. There's not much evidence. I just told you. Yeah, I know. You mean you ain't going to arrest him? No. Not yet. Well, he ain't going to shoot me. I'm going to go kill him on the way home. Right tonight. You're talking to a U.S. Marshal, Jake. Oh. Well, yeah. Well, all right, then you do something about it. I will. But you got any ideas of shooting him out of your head? If you'll arrest him, I will. And don't you forget what liars they are out there. You leave it to me, Jake. You hear? Sure. Not for long, Marshal. Not for very long. Kaiser was a senseless kind of man. And I knew he'd probably go kill young Clabe Tillman the first time it happened to occur to him again. Still, I couldn't arrest Clabe for two murders just on Jake's word that he'd threatened him. I needed a lot more evidence than that. And the only way of getting it I could think of was from Clabe himself. So the next morning, Chester and I rode out to the Tillman place. It was only about 15 miles from town, and we got there early. I just don't understand these people, Mr. Dillon. Oh, what do you mean, Chester? Well, sir, if young Clay was sure enough about Duval and Benson to kill him, why didn't he come to you and have him arrested? He's taking an awful chance this way. Well, nobody came to the law when they hanged Tillman. But maybe someday they'll learn to. Well, they won't if they can go on murdering each other and get by with it. Now, let's tie up here, Chester. Hold on. Oh. Nice place Tillman made here, ain't it? Well, he worked hard on it, Chester. Yeah. Yeah, come on, let's see if Clabe's around. All right. to have me a place like this. Well, he didn't build it on gambling money, Chester. No, sir. Hello, Marshal. Chester. Morning, Miss Oh, hello, ma'am. Come on inside. Oh, uh, thank you. Sit down. Thank you. Well, uh, I, I don't want to bother you, ma'am. Uh, no bother. Well, I was looking for Clay, but I, I'd like to talk to him. He's out back. He'll be here in a minute. Oh, good. Good. Uh, Miss Tillman, have you heard about uh, Duval? 
He was killed last night. All right. Uh, well, don't you care? Several people have been murdered around here lately, Marshal, including my husband. Oh. Well, uh, do you think Benson and Duval were in on that? I didn't say they were. What about uh, Jake Kaiser? You're prying, Marshal. That's the trouble with the law. It's always prying. What do you want Clay for? Well, I thought he might tell me what he knows. You won't. We don't know nothing. And Clay ain't shot nobody. He was in Dodge yesterday. Yeah, I know he was. I wouldn't put it past Jake to have shot Duval himself. Well, I've thought of that, too. Do you have any idea why he might have? No. Here's Clabe now. We got visitors. Hello, Clabe. Marshal? Yes, sir. How are you, Clabe? You, uh, been hunting this morning? No. Put that rifle back where it belongs, son. Okay, Ma. I was shooting hawks with it yesterday. Left it in the barn. You should have brought it in last night, son. Sure, but... Well, it was dark when I got back, Ma. I didn't see it out there. Yeah. I should have brought it in myself. What are you doing here, Marshal? Duval was murdered last night, Clay. He was? Yeah. Shot, same as Benson. Well, what do you know? Uh, Jake Kaiser thinks that, uh, you did it. He does, huh? Uh-huh. He also said that you threatened to kill him next. Maybe I ought to. Clay, don't talk like that. Okay, Ma. How are you going to prove I killed anybody, Marshal? Well, if you have, I'll find out somehow. Go ahead. There's a law against murder, Clay. They murdered my pa. Where was the law then? I'd have had him in jail right now if I knew who they were. Too bad you weren't there, Marshal. Well, I could still arrest Jake. We don't know nothing about Jake. Do we, son? No. No, we don't know nothing. Leave us alone, Marshal. We got trouble enough. Okay, okay, Clay. But you'll hang for murder if you kill Jake. Come along, Chester. I just saw him, Mr. Dillon, walking right up Front Street. Oh, Clay? Yes, sir. It's Saturday, and he's back in town, just like you said he'd be. Well, I wasn't too sure, Chester. Jake might have killed him during the week. It must have slipped his mind somehow. I know what you're thinking, Mr. Dillon. Clay's going to ride past Jake's place on his way home, ain't he? Well, the man's been killed each Saturday the last two weeks. It could happen again. You going to stop him? Get our horses, Chester. We'll ride out to Jake's. Now? Hadn't we ought to follow Clay when he leaves? No, it's Jake I want to keep an eye on. I don't understand. Just get the horses, Chester. Yes, sir. And uh, be sure there's a rope on my saddle, huh? We going to hang somebody? No. Now get going. Yes, sir. Jake's just sitting in the house there. Plum unconcerned, Mr. Dillon. Somebody just got off a horse out there by the corral. I thought I heard a horse. Gosh, I wish there was a moon tonight. Oh, it's better dark. Stay out of the way of my rope, Chester. You gonna rope him? Quiet now. <laughs> All right, now, Chester. All right, grab the rifle, Chester. Yes, I, I got it. No, don't let me go. Why, he's a woman, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, that's why I used the rope. All right, stand up now, Miss Tillman. Come on. 
shouldn't have stopped me, Marshal. Won't do any good. Two murders are enough, aren't they? I was saving Jake for the last. I wanted him to sweat. And I'll kill him yet. Who's out there? It's Marshal Dillon, Jake. Now put the gun down. What's going on here? Why, it's Ms. Tillman. Yeah. She wants to kill you, Jake. A woman? That's a fifty caliber sharps. I think that'd do it. You sure would. You killed Benson and Duval with it, didn't you? I'll kill you if I have to use a knife, Jake Kaiser. A woman? Going around killing people. That's terrible. You hung my husband. One of the best men that ever lived. I told you it was a mistake. I said we were sorry. That's what I've been waiting to hear, Jake. <laughs> no. All right, get his gun, Chester. Here it is, Mr. Dillon. All right, throw it away. With pleasure. Now, you're both under arrest, Miss Tillman. Well, as long as Jake hangs, too. He'll hang. What will Clay think? He knew about this when he found your rifle in the barn last week. And I guess he figured there was no way to stop you. You found the only way, Marshal. I guess maybe I should have told you everything from the first. Yeah. Yeah, but it's too late now. I'm sorry. Don't you feel bad about it, Marshal? I don't mind. I don't really mind at all. I know you don't, Miss Tillman. And that's the worst part of it. Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were John Daner, Helen Klebe, Sam Edwards, Ted Bliss, and Herb Ellis. Parley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty.